Now, let me tell you something. This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in my life. March is having a house. Okay, he's talking about his personal life, human to human. Swarming party. March was like, oh, I have a McAllen 12 for you. I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll take a sip. I'll do one. I drink one drink, one drink. And let me tell you, as a 32-year-old man. I would have been literally drunk. Soon to be 33-year-old man. This one drink me up. I mean, listen, I, I've struggled with alcoholism. <laughs> Back in the day, you could slam half of that bottle and not even feel it. I have officially entered my teetotal era, except here's the worst part. I didn't even get drunk from that one drink. I didn't. Even oh, shit. No, in my 30s, not only did I get drunker faster, but I fell, I just fell asleep, just to, boom. The decline was so real. To get drunk. I went straight to hangover. I'm so tired. No. I was just telling my husband how the last time I did tequila shots was to Love is Blind season two with my sister. And the whole next day, I felt like I was on a fucking boat after like five shots. I was like, oh my God. How did I ever drink tequila in my 20s? How did I ever do shots in my 20s? Tired. Nine hours and 30 minutes of streaming. I feel like I'm. How much? How much? Oh my gosh. I didn't even get drunk from that one drink. I didn't even get drunk. I went straight to hangover. I'm so f tired. Nine hours and 30 minutes of streaming. I feel like I'm so probably. I did such it again. I blinked. I can't hear numbers. I'm so sorry. I just calculate. I'm blaming it. I'm saying I can't. What did he say? Nine hours and 30 minutes of streaming. I f what? Guys, I'm, so I'm having the hardest time in the world. The worst part. I didn't even get drunk from that one drink. I didn't even get drunk. I went straight to hangover. I'm so f tired. Nine hours and 30 minutes of streaming. I f Nine hours and 31. Okay. Uh, that day. That day. I got it. I feel got it. like I'm so probably such a curmudgeon. Like I'm probably bringing the mood down. I'm tired. I've expended all my energy on you for nine hours and 30 minutes. And then I take this one drink and I'm like, oh, dude, this is so bad. I left the party and like I, I spent like an hour. I left my brother and my other friend behind. I was like, y'all are on your own. OK, let God sort it out. But honestly, the real reason why I get like insecure when I'm out at events like that is because like I am a fun loving person. I promise. But the issue is after nine hours and 30 minutes of streaming, like high intensity, I am not a fun loving person. At that point, I'm just like, I'm so tired. Like the same. I'm when I am tired. I had this conversation in my VC and they listen. I don't think you're the real you when you're hungry or tired. I think you are a monster and you're a goblin. And that's me. When I'm hangry, I'm a bitch and I'm not a bitch. I'm just a bitch when I'm hungry. When I'm tired, I am the meanest bitch in the world. And I don't want to be that way to people I love. So I try not to hang out with people when I'm hungry or when I'm tired. I swear to God, I, I'm not myself. I like transform into an horrible person. And my husband always knows. He goes, I love you. Are you hungry? And I'm like, sorry and like he knows it's not personal he takes no offense he knows it's not me he knows it's just like oh you're tired like go to sleep you're hungry and i'm like fuck and i try really hard not to socialize right but that's the thing if you don't know about spoon theory if you don't know about like keeping your energy you know close and important like you won't even know you're angry you won't even know it's not you you will think you are a mean person and i'm not a mean person okay I'm just like fucking hungry and tired. And so again, I know people don't believe us. They don't believe it. And they are always hungry and tired. And they don't even understand like you don't have to be this way. This man need to take care of his spoons. Life has been stripped from me. But yeah, my point is I personally feel insecure about like what my output looks like to other people. I don't want people to think that I'm like, you know, I, I hate being around. Them. Same. I don't want people to feel like I hate being around you, but I will be a bitch if I am tired or I didn't eat. I just will be. I will be so, I can't. Like, I'm just like, it shows on my face. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm like, nobody cares. Like, I'm so mean. So this is, this is a huge fear of mine as well. It's like a big, so I'd rather just not socialize. I would rather just not socialize, but then I look like a person who's never socializing. And then if I'm working and I'm tired, same thing. It's like, I don't fucking want to talk to you right now because everything you have to say, I don't have enough energy to care versus if I have energy, then I care about everything. I care about your new haircut and your bangs and your food, your job. If I'm tired, bro, I don't even care about myself. You think I care about you?
with them. I don't. I'm just really tired. So I, I'd rather like avoid those kind of circumstances. Now you know how how it is with real jobs feel. Yeah, it's funny you say that because all jobs are real jobs. All jobs are real jobs. I used to have a real f job and I was infinitely more social because this is the one area where I absolutely will disagree with you on. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired, but a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way. Yeah, this is his mistake. I think a real job does suck the soul out of you. It just doesn't suck the soul out of him. Because I agree in my 20s, I think he's also forgetting how old he is because in my 20s, I worked 60 hours a week and I could party every day, bro. I worked three jobs all the time and I could party every weekend and still go to work. Now in my 30s, oh, hell no. I think Hassan is 30. He's 32 now. And I think like it's not just streaming, but it's how it impacts him. Right. Like, this is how it impacts him. This is so relatable. I can't even tell you. I think the mistake he's making is just here in this one line. He's like, other jobs don't suck the soul out of you. He should have said the other jobs don't suck the soul out of me. He should have said this is about me. Way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. No, 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 no. No, social battery wise, unless you're in retail, it's very different. You're out of touch. I'm going to die, dude. There's motherfuckers who are accountants in here. And they're misunderstanding what I'm saying. A real job does not expend your social battery in the same way as someone who did a sales job, a real job. Yeah, he should have said mine, my battery. He just he just said you, but it's not true. That's not a universal experience. So because I think other jobs can totally do the same thing. I do, they do that for me. Absolutely. But it is different because you're also in your 20s versus 30s. Like, I, I think like I think we really got to remember how much the age makes a difference, because, again, in my 30s, those jobs drained the, the fuck out of me. But in my 20s, they drained me differently, but I could still party. It was like a totally different experience in my 20s. So, again, mm, and yeah, you know, mm, you know, I'm telling you, as someone who did did both nine hours of wait Val uh Val valeria valeria says they're just using real jobs as jobs for salary are they because that doesn't make any sense wait does it is that also adding to the context or is that confusing me more real jobs as in jobs for salaries like a ca like salary jobs or hourly jobs is that tr oh wait is that true wait because that could change the context because hourly jobs would drain the soul out of you much more than salary jobs. But salary jobs will su suck the soul out of you if you don't like the work you're doing. But generally speaking, salary jobs are better, cushier, and you do have more time to socialize with family and friends. Oh, wait, this could add more context. Because I think I would agree with that, that salary jobs with health benefits and cushy hours and weekends off are less socially draining, even when you're networking, than a hourly job where you're working minimum wage and you have to socialize all day because you're in retail, which is what he said. Okay. If this adds to the context, I agree. If that's not what he meant, then I'm confused. Of, of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out from social scenarios. Oh, Discord disagrees and says that's just confusing you. They mean just not streaming. Mm, okay. So Discord is disagreeing. They're saying, no, they mean just jobs where you're not streaming. Mm. Yes. After nine hours of that, I could probably do physical labor. It would not bother me, but I can't do more social. So he's saying after streaming, he could probably do physical labor, but the idea of socializing after streaming is too much relatable. That's my point. There are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons. Service sector, people pleasing jobs would be very similar. Those okay. are like, I think. So he compared normal social jobs as well. So he has a job in his head. When he says jobs that aren't uh, socially taxing, he has got something in his head, but we don't know what's in his head. More service type. But like if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited, way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine hours. I would say on average unless you're in the busy season, you're probably not socializing as socializing as much in those jobs um, for a concerted amount of time, but you could be at certain, like certain parts, like certain parts of your day or your month or your season. With like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what like sucks your, your social battery and you just tap out after it. 
Yeah, think about it this way. You give presentations for your job, right? Imagine giving a presentation for nine hours straight. After a while, you'd be like, I don't want to talk ever again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I call it like the dead zone. When I'm done streaming, um, I usually have like at least a, a refractory period of an hour where I just sit there and silently stare at my phone. Now True. I get up. I have the same schedule. I get up. Uh, I might do some work stuff for a second, but then I get up and I sit on the couch or I go to my partner and I say, I'm done streaming. And then I sit on my couch and I zone out or we watch uh, One Piece. But like I zone out, like I don't want to do anything. I barely want to pay attention to an anime, but I can. But I usually don't want to do much. Or even if I'm high energy, sometimes I'm high energy after a stream, but my brain is like too non-focused and my partner's like oh my gosh your energy because I'm like not focused but I'm like D -d 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 -d. it just depends but sometimes I can engage and sometimes most of the time I'm drained like I really wish I could like edit after stream and get a video up and do all that stuff but I'm like I don't have it I don't I don't even know how to use my computer like I'll look at my computer and be like do we remember how to use it and it's like nope it's just because the brain fog is so insane which could be also fibro related that was my point and that decompression time period that decompression time period if you're doing that in front of other people it's like it just sucks you just are dead you're hollowed out so people probably think i'm a asshole you've been clip champed and people are people probably do think he's an asshole i mean i yeah uh discord said my sister is a sales manager she socializes a lot see i have a brother in sales and he doesn't socialize all the time every day he socializes some days more than others some days he doesn't talk to anybody some days it just depends like, I would say he's a very social job, but I would say that I have to socialize. It's I think it's different when you know you're going to socialize and then you don't. Uh, and then again, you like socializing after is like very, very different. Right. Discord says you can stop the video now. The rest is him reacting to the after effects of the clip. OK, so that was really good context. That was exactly what I thought he was talking about when I reacted. So, boom. I'm so good at Fuck everybody. Fuck everyone. Fuck me for even doubting myself, bro. Because that's okay. Okay. Because when Papa Gut was like, are you projecting him yourself onto him? But, like, that's the full context. And that's exactly what I thought he was talking about. Was, like, a social situation in which you have to go socialize again at a party or something. Thank you, Discord, for recommending that. Because, yes. Like, that is so fucking relatable, especially since I've had problems with, like, just a couple people in my life who are, like, taking it fucking personal that I can't fucking socialize as much. And I'm like, I need you to fucking go to therapy because, like, I can't fucking socialize with you and I can barely socialize with myself after. Like, it's so fucking rude, I think, for our friends and family to remember we're not, like, you forget we're not dating, guys. We're not, I'm not dating you. I need to sleep. I need to hustle on my career, especially for friends and family that have regular people jobs like non-streamer jobs, non-1099 jobs, who forget like you guys have jobs with careers. You're locked in. Some of us got to hustle for the next, two, you know, and also like it's tiring, bro. You fucking get off work, you know, and then I have to wake up, you know, and it's just fucking annoying. Just I love you so much. Give me some space. Give me some space. I even told my in-laws today I saw them. They came over. I was like, I love you. I want to hang out with you. I'm just like in my hustle era. And also keep in mind, guys, like I have to think about my in-laws and I have to think about my parents. Now, my brother is going to financially take care of my parents if they ever need help. But my in-laws, like I would like to be there for them. I would like to participate in our elders life and my siblings. What if my siblings have like a mental crisis in the future? I would like to be the sister who can provide some sort of housing for them or help if possible, if appropriate, of course, with boundaries. But like if I do that, like I do have to hustle. You know what I mean? And so in order to do that, I think just people take for granted that they don't have people to take care of. I swear to God. Or that their jobs are already established or they already have enough income that they're comfortable. That's great. But like, yeah, I think I'm just thinking of the future. And so socializing to me seems not important unless it's networking for jobs. Like unless it's work-based, like I don't need friends. I need to hustle, but I like love my friends and 99.9% .9 of my friends have respected my boundaries and they know that I'm hustling and it's great. It's the greatest thing. I've My career is changing. Everything is great. I'm so happy about it. But yeah, I don't fucking go to a party. Even if you invite me somewhere, traveling sounds so exhausting. Or even having people come visit me, that sounds really nice, but not right now because I'm hustling. But also maybe in a year. 
you know? And I think that's the thing is like, I, I, I think this is so much more relatable when you see it in the context. Because yeah, like we're aging, we're getting older, we're not going to be able to socialize in the same way. Isn't that funny when you get your dream life? What if your dream life is more secluded? That's what I mean. This idea of like not having harm in the world is impossible. You have to harm reduce to some extent. Because let's say like I, I've been telling people I feel like I'm going into my research era where I'm like secluding myself to study and learn because it's bringing me a lot of joy. But of course, the people in my life are like, oh, she's spending less time with us. Well, I don't mean to reject you. I just mean to how do I do that? How do I say like I want to do this thing? But also this thing, well, I just do it anyways. So if you're having this trouble in your life, this is what I call boundaries. I love you. I love you so much. And I'm so glad that in life, our paths have crossed. And if it's appropriate and incredibly important, of course, I will make time for you, especially if it's an emergency. But there has to be a deep understanding that it is our obligation as people that love each other to facilitate the other finding their joy. And their joy has to be from them and not necessarily from the people around them. Because again, if you need me in your life to be joyful, something is wrong. It is so inappropriate because then that violates my consent to be able to find my joy, which is like researching or solitude. And that's the problem. That's why I say like, I don't own my husband. And truly, if his joy for some reason took him away from me, which would be very strange, I would of course respect that decision to deviate from the plan. But of course, if he's the person I married, which he is, his joy will be in this marriage. But that's the thing. I married him. I'm doing life with him. I did not promise to do life with my siblings and I did not promise to do life with my friends. So as much as I love them, I don't want to do life with them. I want to do life with my partner and I would do life with myself, which means that's why I think I love One Piece because again, it's like five or six or seven or eight, nine, ten individual people who have their own paths, but they're doing life with each other, but they're not doing life with each other permanently forever. Sometimes their lives deviate. They have to do their own thing. And then sometimes they come, but they're all very individualistic versus if you watch like, um, I'm thinking of some different animes like uh, Fairy Tale comes to mind. They're more of a guild. So they're a part of a group and they probably will age. A lot of the people in the guild age together, which is also beautiful. But I, they do like a lot of life together. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes it deviates. But still, it's like I don't, when I imagine my life, I imagine my life, like I imagine waking up every day and saying, like, what do I want to do today? And then if that involves another consciousness saying, hey, consciousness, are you available today? And if they say no, saying like, okay, I love you. When you're available, let me know. Or vice versa. Because again, it's not about rejecting you. It's about making sure that I get to wake up every day and say, what do I want to do today? It's about saying like, what's going to lead me to my joy? And I, I think people forget that like socializing can be a beautiful and honorable thing. Like the people we love will die one day. And it's also okay to say like, I don't want to take every day for granted. So I don't want to miss out on times with you. And it's also okay to, okay to say, that one of the ways that we have to ex like radically accept is that we can't spend every day with each other and it's okay not to, even if you might die tomorrow. I think sometimes when people say, live like you're gonna die tomorrow, they think I wanna spend every moment with you. Realistically, that's not how life works. It's a beautiful idea. I love you so much, I wanna spend every day with you. I love you so much that spending every day with you would probably ruin our time together because we'd probably get on each other's nerves. So I'm going to spend the right amount of time with you in the right amount of moments when it's appropriate so we can have the best time together, right? I think sometimes that's uh, the misunderstanding the world has with itself because I do have that anxiety that people, because I've had people react that way negatively, like, oh my God, you don't love me or you don't want to hang out with me. And I'm like, whoa. Well, even if I didn't want to hang out with you, first of all, that should be okay because I'm saying I don't want to hang out with you right now, like today. I'd like to do something else. But that's not saying I don't want to hang out with you ever. It's just like, I want to do this right now. Is that okay? And it's like, again, it's like a little bit of entitlement. I don't like the entitlement. You know, I don't like entitlement in people. And that's, that's kind of the red flag for me. So yeah, I, I, I thought the context would make more sense seeing it. I'm glad you Discord suggested it because I think what he said was really relatable. Sometimes, dude, after work, you're socially out of spoons. But I think a lot of jobs have that aspect to them. And I really think it's individual. I don't think it's the job. I think it's the individual in the job. Okay, Papa God also had like a really argumentative perspective on it too. And he felt like Hassan was really out of touch with this. I think everyone got fucking triggered in my opinion and misunderstood what Hassan was saying. But also, let's see. 
like, let's see. All right, guys, enough dilly dallying around. Uh, here's what we got here. Okay, here's what we got here. Yesterday, I did my Hassan video, um, and I got I got a little bit of pushback. Nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you know what I mean? But I like some people are like, you just you don't like Hassan. It's showing here, blah blah blah. All right, fair enough. Let's engage. Apparently, there's a longer clip. So we're gonna look at that. Like that's what that's it. Nothing crazy. I think this is the clip I just showed you. I'm pretty sure. Maybe there is something that I missed. And then I want to watch um, Asmongold's video. And we'll watch that through Abram Pre or Abram Preach. So hold on. After stream for nine hours. No, you don't. Oh, okay. Of constant performance <laughs> and people pleasing. Okay, so the, he's going to react to the clip. I just want to hear Papa Guts a little bit of his opinion because I think this is where most people feel. I think Papa Guts giving the basic take right now. Taps you out from social scenarios. After nine hours of that, I could probably do fucking physical labor. It would not bother me. But I can't fucking do more social shit. That's my point. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with him. Like, he's not wrong about that. The biggest problem that i have though because he's right like going on stream it's an interesting thing because i've talked to a lot of smaller creators too and this is something i did at first um there's a performance that you're generally like feel like you have to like uh, maintain um hassan's not there to be honest with you though he's not at the performance level you could tell that he doesn't put on like a face he doesn't put on an act he's constantly letting himself rip through so he doesn't get that argument um in a similar way where like i don't really have the performance anymore a lot of gaming streamers, I think, have that performance where they're like, hey, guys. Oh, hey, guys. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the poop. Thanks for the pee. Right. <laughs> I will say when Hassan said, like, after nine hours of socializing, he could do hard labor. I can't even do that. If my spoons are out, my spoons are out. Whether it's socializing or anything else, like, my body physically is done operating. My brain can't even form a thought. So I actually can't do physical labor after socializing for too long. If I socialize, I'm done. Like, I'm I can't I have the brain fog of like a misty day okay um I would say it's more in, in those people but like still yeah I kind of agree there's times where I play video games offline very rarely that I could stream and I just don't want to because I like to be alone to myself I get that the problem that I have with Hassan here though and I don't know if I've heard anybody else say this is that he doesn't have to stream for nine hours. And that's what Bob, that's the biggest part. And I feel like, I don't know if I've seen anybody explicitly say that, but I feel like everybody feels that way, but it's weird. Like, oh, hey guys, let's formulate an argument against this very entitled Twitch streamer who's consistently um, having, consistently showing us that he is not relatable in any capacity to the mm. average middle-class American. Um, you know, when he's sitting here telling us that it's like, oh, well, it's only a $3 million house. And like, oh, I don't, I don't. Okay. Interesting. First of all, TMM in the chat. Let's go. My brain is mush after just an hour of streaming. It literally like the brain fog is insane. If I stream, sometimes I have the spoons to talk to my husband after stream, but often he'll have so much energy and want to talk to me. And I'm like, babe, I, I can't respond. Like I can hear, listen to you. I can watch a show. But I don't often have, like, the ability to be, like, a person after stream for a long time. But that's just my, like, limited spoon energy. I also think Papa Gut is explaining something that a lot of people feel about Hassan, which is he is rich. So why is he complaining? Which I actually think is just bias and prejudice. But, like, probably prejudice against people who are well off or the 1% of streamers. But let's keep going. There's lots of opinions to go over. So let's 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 see only live off of the bare necessities with his, like, however hundreds of thousands of dollars car. And, oh, I have the... You know what I mean? Like, that's why he's getting so much of this uh, dumpstering. But he doesn't have to do nine hours of streaming. Uh, this, the problem is, is he decided he wanted to take that exclusivity contract. He doesn't need to. Um, people who might say, no, 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 that's how it is. You have to stream for nine hours. No, you don't. The most successful streamers aren't streaming for, like, nine hours. And I'm not even talking about Twitch. I'm talking about in general. Like, I, I look at, like, the Daily Wire. Like, Ben Shapiro, what is he mm. streaming? Ben Shapiro isn't a streamer. Ben Shapiro has a show that he streams. It's different. H3H3 isn't a streamer. Ethan has a show that he streams live, which is not the same thing. A streamer is different, in my opinion, than somebody who goes live. I've been going live for years, but I never called myself a streamer until I did it full time. Because until you do it full time and it's like your thing, then I don't think you're really a streamer. And I I don't I think there's one thing to think about is Hassan is at the height and maybe plateau of his career. In some ways, this is the time to give it all and then to like focus on your career so he can stream less later. I do think you can also 
vent about something you love, but complaining is annoying. I think you and I and everybody agrees complaining is very annoying. Nobody wants to hear anybody complain. I don't want to hear you complain about your McDonald's job. I don't want you to complain about your richness. I don't want you to complain about how pretty you are. I don't want to I don't want to hear you complain about how rich you are or, or ugly you are. I don't want to hear you complain at all. Like, I don't know about you, but do you like hearing people complain? Or are you open to letting people vent? Because like, I, you know, I'll be there if my sister wants to vent, if I want to vent. Like, I love a vent. But a venting sesh is to get an emotion off your chest. It's not to complain about the position you find yourself in. Venting is saying, oh my God, I'm so fucking frustrated. Complaining is is like, it, it, complaining is like saying something that's a problem that you're doing nothing about. Now, Hassan isn't saying he doesn't want to stream nine hours. He's saying he doesn't want to socialize after streaming nine hours, which I think is fair. I don't know why he needed to compare it to other people's jobs because anybody in another job could feel the same exact way. I don't think it's unique to streaming in my opinion. Hey guys, what you just watched was me reacting at the very end of my original stream, finally finding the whole context of the Hassan debacle. So what you're about to see moving forward is actually pre-Britney trying to figure out why people were upset with Hassan. And I specifically showed when I reviewed Papa Gut because then I ended up calling him on stream. Keep in mind, this took place before we found the full context. And then I reviewed Abba and Preach as well. And just keep in mind that this is how the internet works. They watch a two minute quote in context part of a stream and assume that's the full context, which we ended up finding out it wasn't. So I think in order to be good faith, it would be necessary to just make sure we understand that we don't have the full context in a two minute clip. The full context is that he went to a party, socialized, used up all his spoons, and that was the real context context to this whole thing so just wanted to say that you don't it's not the, the way to go nowadays it's a common misconception. i wouldn't complain on stream about it i just don't think he was complaining about it i think he was just saying he's socially drained after streaming and i think that's okay you know what i mean like i just don't think he was complaining about it i i hate complainers guys if i thought hassan was complaining i would say it but I think based off that clip we saw, he was just saying he's socially drained after streaming, which I am too. So relatable, bro. Did he really say anything else? You know what I mean? Like, is he also allowed to regret his decisions? I understand what you're saying. I just don't know if I agree. Conception. That if you want to be a popular streamer, you have to stream for a long time every day. Back in the day, that's what people did. They came on and they streamed for a long time <clears throat> every day. Now there's so much other infrastructure that's really going to be there for you for your, your for your primary you know money, the videos you put on YouTube, the clips. I just think Papa Gut is wrong on this, and no offense, our statistics show it. Like Papa Gut isn't a big enough streamer to give Hassan advice when Hassan is one of the top streamers, and I feel that way about myself. Who am I to pretend like I have any idea what it's like to be a top streamer? I'm not even close, right? that you put on TikTok. And some of the biggest streamers are agreeing with Hassan from Destiny to Asmongold. So I kind of feel like some we're not being realistic here about acknowledging like, and again, Hassan didn't say it's harder to be a streamer. He said, I am socially drained after being a streamer. And I think that's kind of unique to my job, which I think he's wrong in, but he can be wrong about something and not be complaining, right? Or YouTube, Instagram those things are more important. So if you have a steady time of like this time to this time and you're streaming here, people can tune in or you can put your videos out, which I would say <clears throat> is the real money maker, at least for me, <clears throat> and you'd make a ton of money doing that. Your streams would be more entertaining streaming less. You'd have more time to yourself and to enjoy yourself. Yeah, just the concept, again, if, if your goal is to be a top streamer, none of this matters. The top streamers are doing what they're doing and they're beating everybody. Or... You know what I mean? You can be someone who has more balance in your life and do something different. But I just don't think like you can't give a top streamer advice as if they're not already the top streamer. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense for smaller streamers to look at bigger streamers and to say like, you know what you should do? This. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but this whole victim narrative, I'm what? just not into it. What? I'm just not into it. I, I just think it's stupid. Um, he's part of like the, the, the he has this thought. Like, just stop taking the exclusivity contract with Twitch, and you're done. And you're and that's all you would need to do. That's it. So like this is a 100 percent your problem. You could literally stop streaming right now, and you would be set for life. Your 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 life wouldn't change. He was making like 200 grand a month just on Twitch alone, 
And then you got YouTube, which he's making a good amount. He's probably making like a lot of money on Twitch too. Because again, I'm a 35,000 mm -hmm. subscriber uh, YouTube page that posts two videos a day that like on average, I would say maybe gets 8K views per video. So I'm like, let's say I get 8,000 views. I have 250,000 watch hours in the past. Of, like the last That's month, good. In the past like 28 days rather. Um, that gives me like, you know, middle, upper middle class income. Like you, <laughs> how much, how much do you think he's pulling? How much do you think Papa Gut makes? He tells us later in this stream how much he made last year. How much do you think Papa Gut makes with those numbers? Just so we can get the audience preview, okay? Because about 200,000 views a, a month on his videos, about 8K a video. He posts two videos a day. He streams daily, three to four hours. How much do you think Papa Gut made last year with that information? He said he's middle class to middle upper class. How much do you think Papa Gut makes? Does anybody want to take a guess? You know what I mean? Maddox says, did he make himself the victim? I didn't hear it. Yeah, I didn't hear it either. We'll listen to it again because Ab and Preach have a video about it too. I don't think Hassan in that one clip we're all reacting to, in no way, he just said he is extremely drained. <laughs> That's what he said. Drained. Okay. Upper middle class is a lot of income. Well, that's what Papa Gut identified as. He identified himself as a middle class, upper middle class person. So how much do you think that is? Alex heard upper middle class and said 100K. Okay. Other people are saying 55K, 90K, 60K, 70K, probably 80 or 90. I will say around 1 million up. Very wrong, Leo. Nice try. 80 to 100K from Mikey. Okay. Um, I'm about to start a YouTube channel. Good luck, girl. You can't, you know, it's a lot, but you could do it if you wanted to. Ghoulish has 50 to 90K. 50 to 90K is a huge income jump. That's a huge difference in income, guys. 150. Okay, I don't know if we're going to see the clip right now, but I watched this stream, and later in the stream, he said he made 70K last year. It's good money, 70K, but it's not upper middle class. It wasn't even upper middle class when I was a kid. 70K growing up my whole life was never upper middle class. The fact that he identifies as upper middle class is so fascinating to me because that is not upper middle. Six figures is upper middle class if you're a single person, not if you have a family. So even then, like, I don't even know what that means. Like, if you have a family, it's kind of upper middle class too, depending on your region. But he makes about 70K, right? Or so, so what do you guys think about that? Later in the stream, he says he makes 70K. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. But 70K... And that's pre-tax, obviously, I'm assuming up. I'm assuming. It's very different. You know what I mean? The average income is 63000 He makes slightly above the average income, guys. Right? The average personal income in the United States is 63214 And median income across the country being 44000 You know? So... Okay, that's pretty damn good income. And his wife works, so he has a double income in the house. That's just his income. Okay, for being, and he's self-employed, exactly. He's self-employed, so that's a 20% tax on that. Right? That's a 70, that's a 20% tax on that, on that income. So, you know, it's pretty good. You know, he said he made more in previous years. Yeah, last year I made less than the year before, but I made more the year before than I made in the last couple years. So again, when you're having this conversation, remember that Hassan or any of us being given an opportunity to make $15 million also doesn't just come from anywhere. Hassan did have to work. He got a huge level up having uh, Chank as his uncle, huge level up by having Destiny as his friend. But ultimately, Hassan surpassed Destiny and his uncle. There is something about Hassan, whether you like him or not, and I don't even like Hassan, that he's better at his job than Destiny is, and he's better at his job than Papa Gut is, he's better at his job than I am, and he's better at his job than any of us are because he's bigger than us. So in some fucking way, we have to be a little bit humble and say, what the fuck is Hassan doing where he's beating all of us in terms of numbers? Because he obviously is. So why is that? What is he so good at his job that we can't figure it out? Because nepotism is only going to get him the, the jump in. But then he surpassed the people who gave him the jump in. He literally got bigger than the two people who helped him rise to the top. So what is it Hassan is doing? He's obviously not being lazy. He's obviously a person who's the most likely to get burnt out. So what is it? And that's the question. What is it? What did he figure out about his job? What did he... You guys are saying it's because he's pretty. <laughs> He did. He figured out something about his job. And that's interesting. If we're just talking about streaming, right? 
I don't know. I feel like, look, I don't even like Hassan, but it feels weird to like take away the effort he's made into being who he is and like the success he's, success he's had. It feels just so weird to do that. You guys just think because he's pretty? I do think his looks play a part, right? Ludwig said when he had to buzz his head for a prank or something on YouTube, he literally lost subscribers and views for three months. Pretty privilege is absolutely a thing. So I do think Hassan's attractiveness plays a huge role in how people watch him. Um, just because other streamers have even talked about that. You know what I mean? Even Destiny acknowledges the reason Hassan is more successful than him. I mean, Hassan is obviously more successful. Um, but pretty privilege could definitely be a thing. Yeah. You know? PB says, have you not heard of having connections or being a sellout? Um, I don't think that matters. We're in a business to make money. I don't give a fuck if you sell out in entertainment. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, everyone has different values. What, are you mad at him for just having different values than you? How do you know he even sold out? You know what I mean? I don't know if, like, you guys are projecting your values onto Hassan and that feels really fucking weird. You know what I mean? But, like, that's up to you. Now, of course, as, as a talking head, the reason I don't watch Hassan is because he feels like a talking head to me. Right. But that's the thing is like that's that's what people usually want in the average in the big world, in the general world. That's why they watch Fox News and CNN and all those other things, because they just want people to tell them what they want to hear. So I don't like Hassan is just another one of those people in some way. Right. I don't know. Feels weird. Pulling, like watch time hour. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Incomplete verse. If you want an international audience, long hours make sense. No, they wouldn't. Like that's unrealistic. In, in, in complete fairness, the longer that you stream and the less uh, the 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 worse your attitude is, which Hassan's attitude is absolutely dog shit, the worse your streams are going to be. Like there are like oh well, in complete fairness, if you did this, you could get more people. Sure, and sometimes those things are just not realistic. I would argue that he's hit diminishing returns on his streams. His streams are not particularly entertaining. Because Why do we keep saying that his streams aren't entertaining? But he's one of the biggest streamers. Do you know what I mean? Why do we keep saying that? Just to us. We don't like, I don't like Taylor Swift music, but I'm obviously not in the majority here. Like when I hear Taylor Swift, I literally hear those TikTok memes of what she sounds like. Sprinkle, I like sprinkles. I like sparkles. I'm a sparkle girl. That's what Taylor Swift sounds like to me. Obviously, I'm not the person who matters. The world loves Taylor Swift, so I must be wrong. It's just personal taste. You can't say, you can't say Hassan is a bad streamer and he's the, one of the top streamers <laughs> like I had a friend tell me that where he's like Hassan is a horrible streamer I was like what are you talking Hassan is a top streamer you cannot tell me someone who's a top streamer or a top entertainer in the world sucks at their job like you I don't know what the fuck planet we're on right now what that's literally like people who are like Taylor Swift is bad at her job what like what do you mean she's obviously great at her job bro He's most of the time he's sitting there just jerking off doing like nothing of importance or value. Um, he's probably like that's if he if he if people were like Hassan streamed for four hours today and it was all something to do. You'd like that a lot more than if Hassan streamed for seven hours or nine hours a day. And then the, like 40 percent of the stream was there was something to do because now, you know, like when you come into my stream and I know I'm still my streamer. He's he's wrong. He's just fucking wrong. It's wrong. People would rather you be streaming and basically doing nothing because they want to spend time with you than if you streamed for shorter hours and had more going on. It's not true. I get feedback on my clips where people are like, one or two comments are like, can you make shorter clips? Shorter clips do worse. The audience does not know what they want. The audience, the numbers know what they want. Individual commenters have no idea what they want. The numbers know what they want. I had people tell me they won't watch my clips if they're less than 45 minutes, which is true. I'm that kind of content consumer. I won't watch a clip. If there's an Asmongold clip and it's only 20 minutes, I'll skip it. But if it's 45 minutes to two hours, I'll watch it because I watch clips and streams in the background while I'm doing things. If it's a 10 minute video, I'm not going to fucking watch it because I don't want to have to click the video to more videos. Those are the kind of viewers I want. I want viewers that want to watch long shit for long hours because they're cleaning, cooking, thinking, doing, meditating, working out, whatever. Right. So like it. OK. Ingrid says, if you want shorter clips, put on two times speed. OK, not even. First of all, did you know that takes away time watch from the creator? But also, yeah, just put it on times two. So again, everyone has a different relationship with content. You have to decide what audience you want. You cannot look at one of the top fucking streamers and be like, he's bad at streaming. Don't. 
it looks stupid. It looks so weird to be like, you know who's a bad streamer? One of the top streamers. <laughs> all that. But when you come into my stream, like you know at least I'm going to be doing something. I'm not gonna be sitting there jerking. Maybe I'm taking a piss. I well, like it. I like that. I like streamers that sometimes Tom does that too. Tom will just sit on stream and not talk for five minutes. And honestly, I don't even like. I'm like, okay. Like sometimes it's weird because I can't tell if the stream froze, but I do not care. Like I do not care if people are just sitting because I'm just hanging out with them. I do not need to be entertained. Sometimes one time someone said that to me. They're like, hey, sometimes you take like thirty seconds and you don't say anything. You guys can go watch something else. The whole point of streaming is to hang out with people, to feel like a vibe, to be like literally some of the top streamers I know don't even talk for like 45 minutes because they're playing video games. They're just doing something, but it's not the same thing if you're a talking streamer. Again, everyone has a different niche. You have to decide what audience you want, right? Real quick, but I'm going to be doing something, but Hassan's not like doing anything when you join his stream other than like- It doesn't matter. People like that. Rolling through Twitter, looking for things to do so he can get as many clips up on YouTube as possible. He's drastically hit diminishing returns on the content that he's pumping out. And he is just miserable and he has a shit attitude. And that's what the problem is. He's burning. There's no problem. Everything is fine. Burning himself out. He has a shit attitude. Everyone burns out. Everyone, I burn out. Everyone burns out. And if you don't burn out, that's fine. But like most people burn out. That's really normal. And he, like, ref he's not doing anything to change it. That's the thing. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> and what you would do is do less work. Okay. You're not a workaholic. I don't believe he's a workaholic. This is just what he thinks he has to do to maintain relevancy. Because as a content creator, I understand that too. Sometimes you feel like you have to be stuck. I agree. I agree with Hassan. I just think Hassan's right on this. I do. I don't understand. Like his numbers prove that in so many fucking ways. And yes, your relationships will suffer. But that's why if we're talking about being a streamer and being a content creator, you have to be someone want to watch. Some, like you have to be. You can't just stream 10 hours and do nothing. But Hassan obviously doesn't. Hassan. His numbers prove he's doing something. Okay. Until I got to do this. I, I'm. This is just fundamentally how content creators' brains work. I, I, when I do this, I do well. If I do something else, I won't do well. I have to keep doing that thing. And oftentimes, not making those changes is devastating for you in the long term. That's true. You have to make changes. So, you like, have to adapt. You're, you, you know, people don't like Hassan because he's constantly having shitty emotional reactions. No, you, you can't say people don't like Hassan. Some people don't like Hassan and they don't matter because they're not the 30,000 people watching him on stream every day. A lot of people don't like Ethan. But they don't matter. They're not the 40,000 people watching Ethan on stream. Do we get what we're saying here? We're saying a guy who gets 30,000 people a stream, doesn't know what he's doing. Even if you were getting 15K a stream, you're saying he doesn't know what he's doing when we're getting 500 people a stream, 200 people a stream, 180 people a stream? Seems a little fucking crazy. He's complaining, he's crying. He's it sounds like people who like talk about how like, oh, if I did it, I'd do it so much better. But like, you can't even fucking do it though. Has no time to himself. Stream less. Stream less. Did he say that? Did he say that? All he said is that after stream, I'm socially drained. That's all you need to do. Stream less. Like you might, um, you might in the short term lose some money, but you still have more than enough. That's and true. You would in the long term just have a better attitude, and people might tune into you more. T don't, Papa Gut. This is so funny to me. How can you say people will tune into you more when, bro, he gets like, he already. What does that mean? Nine hours of of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out from social scenarios. See, it taps you out from social scenarios, meaning it drains your battery so you can't go out after work. You can't hang out with friends. You can't do more talking. So see, it taps you out. It exhausts your spoons. It takes away your energy. You're unable to be social with people after streaming. Unlike the assume the assumption, which is like, oh my God, you're streaming. So you're doing little to no labor, which means you should have energy after stream. There is this assumption that streaming is so easy that you're not exhausting any energy, but you're exhausting emotional or social energy. So in mental energy. So by the time you're done, you're exhausted. But because you weren't physically moving, people literally think you haven't worked. Hello, hello. Hello. People are telling me that you are streaming right now. Yeah, I, I, I even talked talk mad shit, bro. About me? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is our bridge burning moment. 
Oh, what do we have a disagreeable take about Hassan Piker? Maybe. I actually, well, I had a okay. couple of uh, things. I wanted to ask you, um, do you think he yeah. was complaining or venting? I feel like it's the same thing, no? No, I think complaining. I... Okay, listen, okay. venting is when you're like self-aware and you're stressed and you need to like share it with someone. Mm -hmm. Complaining is when you're not self-aware and you just want to hear yourself talk. I think that uh, I understand the the difference, what you're saying. But at the end of the day, he was upset because he was tired and he put that on the internet and that makes it free game. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. want to not be criticized for your low moments like that, then create a boundary and don't put like try not to put your low moments on line. Okay, for sure. What do you think? Because I put my low moments with my audience because I trust them. And I understand haters mm -hmm. will hate. But then I no. kind of write off those haters as like like non-compassionate sociopaths. Do you think like you're being a non-compassionate sociopath? <laughs> the Hassan? <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Because like the number one criticism I have is just stream less. Like it's a self-created problem that nobody else is uh, like, is re it's not relatable to like most other people. Um, because like you just don't want to stream less. Like you decided to lock yourself into a contract with Twitch, uh, despite the fact that you're criticizing Amazon all the time. And that's like, that's a, yeah. that's a parent company of Amazon. And then you're complaining that you don't have a social battery, like to just stream less, like reconstruct your content. And that's honestly would probably be better for his content. Uh, things have shifted rapidly in the past decade or so where back in then I get it. You needed a stream all day. So people could come in and watch you, but now there's massive availability. i um, in mainstream availability of YouTube videos, like longer form stuff. Mm -hmm. And then TikTok shorts, like shorter form content, where that's the main pull. So if you have a consistent streaming schedule for like, let's say, say he decided to do 12 to five every day. And then you, you focus on actually having an entertaining stream where you prepared content for the day and you came on and the entire four or five hours was actually entertaining instead of sitting there for nine hours f jerking off, like, you know, f half the time. Mm -hmm. You'll have a more entertaining stream when people come to tune in. You will have, and you'll be able to get more videos out and more short uh, form content out and actually have a better work balance, work life balance that's going to make you happier and which is going to reflect in your content. Because Hassan also is just a bad, has a constant bad attitude because he's constantly burned out from burning out from streaming all the time. Yeah, but like he's a top streamer. Don't you think it's kind of cringe to see small streamers ever give advice to bigger streamers when they're like the top street? They must they're working harder than anyone. They're working. They're streaming two hour, two hundred hours a month, bro. They're like top streamers. That means they're working harder and doing better. Obviously, true. You're right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Like you got me on that one. Well, a little are you bit. Being like, serious or are you, are you being facetious? No, I'm being fucking serious. Like I want to be a top streamer, but I can't work that hard, bro. I know I can't. Do you, I, do you think that being a top streamer means you work nine hours a day and you stream nine hours a day? Um, it depends. I noticed in my channel, I make more money the longer I stream and I am absolutely capped out after like the fact, bro, I look at you and I admire your hustle. I look at you after stream. I cannot edit to save my life. To be fair, it's at the end of my 12 hour day. I work three to three. And so mm -hmm. like at the end of my 12 hour day, the last thing I can do is fucking think, let alone Are you edit. streaming from three to three or are you just doing like other stuff outside of it? No, no, no. I stream from 8 p.m. to like 2 a.m. or 12, depending on an early day, but usually till about 2 a.m. So you got like a six hour stream, you're saying? Yeah, usually four to six hour stream. And then before I do calls and editing and then I do all the other stuff, like I edit all my clips and stuff. I do everything myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, it might be worth considering lowering your stream because it, like after a six hour stream like i'm burnt out too that's why i try not to stream for six hours <laughs> see but i noticed that if i dedicate more of my time to stream it actually like i have i i have the most joy streaming so i'm sure. happiest when i'm streaming but yeah. two i also have like then product but then i am too exhausted afterwards and so just socially right to do anything even my husband he'll talk to me and i'm like i love you so much i can't even think right now but like give me a second and so i mm -hmm. think about that and i think that's all hassan was saying is that he's socially drained after streaming which is normal but also if i want to be a top streamer i do think i have to stream that long every day i do think that i look at a destiny's numbers asmin's numbers every big streamer has those numbers have you ever looked at somebody like Ethan Klein's numbers? Ethan isn't a streamer. He's a content oh, creator who does a live but, show. That's not the but, same. But it's not the same, but it's very similar, right? But it's not. This, he does a show. Oh, he has a show. Hold on. Okay, hold go, on. go, go, go. Hold on. <laughs> You're right. He does, it, he does a show, right? He streams three hours, three to four hours a day for three days a week. With a crew. He, sure, with a crew. But he comes onto the stream with content prepared, and the entire stream is entertaining. That's the thing or would be generally more entertaining. Whereas the typical right now streamers are like, I'm just going to go on for, let's say, 10 hours and I don't and I don't necessarily have 
constant entertaining moments. That's why it's huge. The Twitch meta is huge. And the biggest reason why people, I think, use Twitch is because uh, DMCA is not nearly as prevalent on here. Like, you know, you mm-hmm. watch Jubilee video, even if you're reacting to it and you can get taken down. Mm-hmm. That kind of shit doesn't happen over on Twitch. Okay, here's and, the like, question. Hold, hold, but a huge Both. amount of their time is spent not providing entertainment to people. Um, as entertainment content. So it's just like, that's what people I think used to do, but now the landscape has changed dramatically. TikTok and YouTube are going to be huge in, in the shift. And that's mm. That's changing in real time. But that I would, I don't like, I don't know how much like you're doing. You said you make the most on streaming. I make the most by a long shot video content creation. I make the most, well, I make the most on Patreon first and foremost, because my viewers are amazing. They support the content. But then Mm -hmm. I make the most on AdSense, which is a combination of streaming and memberships for sure. But the streams are where the memberships, like people love the streams. They come to see me live. It's really great. But then Mm -hmm. you're right. The clips bring in some of the income. You know what the clips bring in? They bring in subscribers. Sure. Yeah. But you know, they can also bring in, they can also bring in money too. I wish they brought in more. Money. Let me tell you, but let me tell you. Okay. But you post more than I do. I post less than you do. Cause I yeah. don't have the spoons. Like you have so much energy and I'm so like, I want it. I want whatever drug you're on. I want it. <laughs> it's my drug is three hour streams. Okay. okay but see, drug. I feel like I can't even get through a monologue in three hours. I love being a streamer. So I think it's that where like, I love streaming. And so a part of me like really loves being here, but yeah. then I need to make time to edit and stuff, which sucks, but also it's great. Like I'm not complaining about my job. It's a great fucking job, yeah. but I am, I think fairly venting that like, oh crap. It's like any job where you work for yourself, you work and hopes to make money and you do it for free. And then you hope to make money. And then if you're lucky enough, you get big enough where there's a guaranteed income every time you wake up, which which is awesome. But like, I don't think you or I are at that level, right? Where like, do you feel like, you know, you're going to have this job in 10 years? Like it, you're going to make the same amount of money. Like, I hope so. I think so. Do I, do I know? Uh, I don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm always ready to go back and get like a regular person job. Like I'm fine sure. with that. Like I sure, could sure, go sure. and become a bus driver and probably make like 60 K a year. Like the, go yeah, back yeah, in my yeah. CDL. Like I, you know, I'm, I've, I'm beneficial in that capacity. I worked for a bus company for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Like, I always have a plan B in case I need it, right? You just never know. This is a blessing in so many ways. Yeah, but I'm pretty consistent. Like I'm, I've been doing this since the end of 2020. Yeah. I'm fairly consistent. I'm on like an, you know, last year was like a down year, but I also rebuilt the channel. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm on like a slow uh, increase with the with the way that I'm what I'm doing it. So like, yeah, but I'm doing well. Yeah, like, that's great. Yeah, you so are. You I, are. Look, I. I mean, I watch your content. I watch your streams. Thank you. Like, I. I really am impressed. I tell my husband, all you should time be about, watching them on the stream I, so that you can <laughs> make well, it content. <laughs> and post the video that's what well, you i did do. i did react a little bit to you and i you know again i couldn't tell like why you were going so hard on hassan but a part of me thinks like i think everyone has a hard life even if you're a billionaire i just think it's a different kind of hard life sure, like, I, but that's the whole thing right like mm-hmm. his heart his life compared to himself is like difficult i understand like the relative aspect yeah. of having a tough life but his life compared to everybody else is easy and he's trying to be relatable to everybody else mm, only uh, when it so, comes to social though didn't he specify social draining Sure. But yeah. still like, but there, but that's the thing is that it feels like almost like a very entire, it's a very entitled take in my opinion, because it's not just about the social aspect of a job where you're talking to people. It's about all the things that are surrounding it, the different life pressures, uh, needing like the, the money is a huge factor, but there are so many different things. Um, there are ma- just tons of other factors that are weighing down on top of you when you're at work. One of those things is that you have to work for money. Hassan's not yeah. in that place. A basic needs might not necessarily be met. You may not be able to afford to go to a doctor. You might yeah. have an issue going on with your kids. You might have an issue going on with your partner. You might have an issue going on with your mom or dad. Money alleviates 90% of problems for people. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Um, and so, like, I, like, again, he could just stream less. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's not even, like, something he has to do. Hmm. I, just, yeah, I guess you know. we're deviating on the has to because in my mind, if I want to make it like he has bigger dreams than where he is right now. So he has to do it. If he I wants to attain those goals, I do think he has to do it. But if he, I disagree, I disagree. Yeah, I think I take like if you want to be Graham Stephan and you want to be a multimillionaire mm-hmm. who lives way below your means because you just need to be average, then it doesn't matter. But like if you like my husband and I have like a budget we keep no matter how much more money I make, we're going to live like this is how much we're making. So mm-hmm. we never run into the mistake. I think a lot of rich people make it, which is like I'll always be this rich, which is never a guarantee. Like look yeah. at Hassan's family. They lost all their money, right? Their dad well, lost I'll, all their money. I don't money. know if that's I don't know if that's true. That well, that's. Not. 
That, we don't Hasan know what is, any. Well, we don't. Hassan know. is a routine liar. Yeah, I mean, but here's like, what I here, yeah. here's what I know. He his parents were able to move him to the United States to have him born here to get citizenship and then go back have a really good life in Turkey. Yeah. Um, his father's like a very affluent individual was, with a lot of money. Was. I, it seems like he still is. Well, that's the and problem, came, right? And so, then he came back. Well, but then he came back know. here and then he got a, he got a free ride with his uncle that had a million YouTube followers at the yeah. time that he started working with him. Hassan is not exactly. I don't think that's. You know, a very typical experience, a pretty, pretty, uh, fairly streamlined experience. It's a nice know? experience, right? And I would say that that, sure. but, but I will tell you this: as somebody who's had millions of views on her videos, who's had a huge,r much bigger YouTubers than I've ever known in the last few years, give me shout outs. I never you know. was able to rise, like have that moment of like, oh my god, I'm like picked up because like I never was the right kind of content creator. I wasn't good at my job in the same way. Hassan has something, whether we like it or not, that makes him an exceptional streamer because he's one of the top streamers. You can't just do that by accident, right? So that alone tells me, yeah, sure. like that alone tells me like he must be working hard and something must be there, but also he got lucky and also he's very handsome. So people want to watch him because he's handsome, but there's a sure. lot that goes into this that I think doesn't take away from the fact that he might also feel socially drained or be sad sometimes or have a mental health crisis or any of those things. Now, I think I agree with you. I wouldn't say that mm -hmm. other jobs aren't socially draining or soul sucking. I think a lot of people feel that way about their jobs. And mm -hmm. I would tell those people, like I would tell Hassan, do something different if that's the case. But also, if you're playing a hustle game, yes, it will be soul crushing until you can get out of the game. So I wouldn't necessarily tell him to stream less. I would say suck it up for two years years and then get out of the game or stay in the game but like that's what it's going to be but i think he has the right to vent to his audience i think a lot of people understood i i didn't i don't know i didn't see him as complaining as much but i could see how that's annoying as fuck if he is complaining because nobody wants to see a pretty girl complain i i think that the differentiation between complaining and venting is almost like nothing to me like there's a there's a justifier for him to complain or vent or however you want to label it like he's burnt out i understand that i don't have to be sympathetic to it because he's an entitled asshole that has created a problem for himself where no one else could simply solve the problem by working less. He's a, He's got millions and millions of dollars. He could work less. It would probably be better for his content in the short term or in the long term, excuse me. You even kind of half admitted it yourself saying like, hey, do it for two, or two more years, suck it up yeah. and get out of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's more longevity in having a better work-life balance. And that's one of the things about being a content creator. You get better work-life balance. Or you should be able to have better work-life balance. I disagree with that, too. I find that the more serious I'm taking my job, the less time I have for family and friends. I would just say try to hit a good work-life balance. Yeah, I don't – I can't have – I don't – like, I do that with my husband. I prioritize him. But, like, even sure. – like, I've had that with friends where I was like, hey, I can't socialize as much. I used to have, like, five, six hours a day I could call people. I can't do that anymore. I have no that's hours. A lot of, that's a that's a lot of time for – But that's what I used to do. And I used to be making, like, good money doing that. Like, I would have a yeah. lot of time. And now that I don't, like, one or two friendships were like, hey, I feel like you have less time for me. I was like, I do, girl. I'm in my hustle hour. I'm, like, doing hustle years for two years to solidify some sort of like stability in my career but that mm -hmm. like i'm at the lower level game i'm just trying to solidify six figures hassan is trying to solidify at least a million a year which is like basically what he makes right makes about well, a million. i think he does two hundred thousand a month on twitch and uh, then plus youtube and then plus i don't um, know i don't know how those numbers are working out because he got about seventeen thousand subscribers like a month, so maybe like it could be two hundred and fifty thousand a year for sure. He could be making so much money. But even Andrew sure. Schultz talks about this as the comedian, you know, on flagrant, where he was like, sure. you know, even though he's Netflix famous and even though he has all this money, he can't stop because his family now depends on him to make money to like be there for him, and he doesn't want to stop because again, it's not just about him anymore. Hassan takes care of his parents financially and everything, from my understanding. Same okay. with Asmin Gold. So again, I think there's like a compassion element here. I I think they're far over the bet, like the the element of like how much they need to, make to support their family. I agree so like with if, that. If if Hassan backed off and only made a five hundred thousand or a million dollars a year, he would be fine. Yeah, I agree with that. No, don't get me wrong. If they wanted to live like regular people, yes. Well, but not you regular people. Like he could live like a like five hundred thousand to a million a year. Backing off, probably have more longevity. Well, how would he, he do better... that if he's not making? A... He still has to pay tax on all that money. He still has to like. Well, yeah. well, I mean, listen, I'll take five hundred k and pay two hundred fifty k in taxes. Like I'll be, I'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know because okay, the, if the average American is complaining about making two hundred thousand dollars a year, I think people think I'll be better with money when I get there. I'm not convinced Hassan's good with money. I'm not convinced anyone's good with I mean, money. I mean, that's 
but i feel that way about poor people too where i was like why are you complaining make more money and the same way with rich people why are you complaining be better with your money it's like because sometimes it's a vent sometimes it's not a complaint sometimes they don't know better and again fuck hassan i don't even like hassan i hate that i'm even defending him but like i'm just saying it feels like people are picking on him for just having a very human yeah. emotion and it's weird well, to yeah, me because because he because he's incredibly rich and his complaints <laughs> so rich don't people matter. don't deserve compassion <laughs> no, well 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 but like what's the degree where compassion is too much i mean you're sitting here talking you're giving justifiers for people making five four five hundred thousand dollars a year maybe not being enough money to yeah. afford a living you know what i mean like well, i it depends on the game i don't have playing. the same yeah, well, I mean, like, live within your means, though. Like, I, I again, mm -hmm. from a long-term capacity, I don't think that the nine-hour streams are helping. People are dogging on him more and more every day because True. he has, he's more and more angry every day. In a long-term capacity, I'm telling you, like, this is where it's the the social media is moving. Streaming less, doing like four to five hours, even like even three to four or five hours with entertaining content where you're set up and you know what you're going to do for yeah, the day yeah, yeah. is going to be better. Um, in the long run, like I understand you might make less money streaming, but you're going to be like have higher energy. You're going to produce better content because mm -hmm. you're going to be more emotionally available for your content. Yeah. And you just have to mix in TikToks and YouTube videos and like do those well within the parameters they need to be done. Like, do you how do you make clip content? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Def well, you mean like you um, TikTok and stuff? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've been working on it, but it's the hardest for me because I don't have any energy at the end of the day. Even if I wasn't like it doesn't it doesn't matter to me what I'm doing. If I'm doing too much of anything, I'm burnt out. So like I, I understand, sure. but I'm also working 12 hour days, which I think is pretty normal for a YouTuber, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, it, is it normal? Possibly. I I. I that's a lot I mean well I have multiple streams do, of income right so like I work sure. like multiple jobs if I look at all of them they all just, I, like have different income levels yeah I would say if you kicked back from the streaming down a little bit mm -hmm. and you focused more on doing um, other types of content you might just be better off I, I don't know specifically like I don't know how much content you try to produce but if you focus on just going for like one video a day and then one one video one clip and then one medium form to uh, TikTok content a day you probably you know, that might help you yeah, for sure. I mean, without a doubt, right? I'm just trying to, that's what I'm talking about, like energy wise. It's interesting, but I'm not, like, I don't know. I've been trying to test different things, like, oh, how do, how tired do I feel? I feel like I feel tired no matter what, but that could be the fibromyalgia, damn it. Like, that could literally yeah, true. just be the fibro change in my body. Cause last year before I hit, I started getting sick. Oh my God, I was hustling. And it, like, it definitely was different. My body was so different. So honestly, I think I'm also getting to those changes. So I feel you. It's not that I think Hassan is like, you know, the most like, it's like Pokemane. I hate hearing that woman complain, but also mm -hmm. if she's really venting, damn, I want to be compassionate. You know what I mean? Why, why, but why, you know, well, why, why I can be compassionate to a degree, well, but it's hard to be, if so, it's hard to be compassionate to people who are in a problem that they've created themselves that can easily leave the problem. Um, which is I Hassan's think, issue. Where well, I think at. if Mark Cuban came and told me he was tired, I'd be like, yeah, I feel you, bro. But I, yeah, but I think, he's, Mark Cuban's not telling you that he's tired. Mark Cuban would be, or Hassan's not telling you that he's tired. He's telling, he's complaining on his own stream about how difficult um, it is to be a streamer because his social batteries run out. And then, and then just the comparison to a normal job is going to, of course, offend a lot of people who have to work a real job, who have ooh. more stressors than just working a lot and having their social battery drained. So it's that's also, another thing, right? Yeah. It's, it is a real job. Like streaming is a real job. Sure, but I call I I rather call like a real job. Like I understand streaming can be a, is a real job. Like I you make an income, but it's not like I when I say a real job, I mean like a job with like real stressors. Okay, you know, this like is doing a I disagree. Job. Oh look, as somebody who's hustled her whole fucking life since she was a kid, I know. But Hassan's I not refuse. you. That's I know, not making a lot of money. I know, but I'm just saying like he's making a lot more money than us. So but Hassan like, didn't just get there because even with his like lift off from Chank and stuff in Destiny, it isn't. He huge. beat Stephanie and Chank. He beat them. He beat his mentors out. They suck compared to him in terms sure. of numbers. And it's because it's because 2020 was like a huge year um, for a lot of people that got a lot of attention. He's an attractive person. He sure. speaks confidently. Sure, and he's sure, very sure. ignorant and the reason that he's, he's falling down more and more is because he can't shift with the atmosphere because his audience was young people mm -hmm. that mean well that are getting older and realizing life is different and he's sure. become less less relatable to them I so agree. like right, right now i agree hassan's doing better than destiny 
I would argue in 10 years, Destiny is going to probably have exponentially more longevity than Hassan. I could see. Th- oh, for sure. Especially with the trajectory. He's go- he's doing great. Yeah, like, I think so- he would. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think, again, none of the privilege people have take away from the real feelings they could have. Compassion means to suffer with. It isn't. You don't have to comp- have compassion for all people. And again, I don't like complainers. But if mm. you're really suffering, like I'm happy to meet you where you're at. But also, you don't have to. Do you to. think Hassan's really suffering, though? Um, I think, tired from you know shrimp? what it is? Maybe it's my bias. I think he explained a phenomenon that I also, um, not a lot of people talk about, which is like, there's an assumption that because you're a streamer, you have more hours to socialize, which is not true. Or because you're just Maybe. streaming, like you'll have more social, um, energy after stream. And that's not my personal experience. And I know you keep saying like stream less, but like yeah. I, when I was hustling in my 20s and working multiple jobs, I could party every day after work. And I couldn't mm-hmm. do that now in my 30s. Like, I'm sure. tired. <laughs> so I, I would say that I think I just liked hearing someone finally say something that I feel like, oh, yeah, that's my lived experience, too. I'm not okay. trying to I'm not trying to reject my friends by not hanging <clears throat> out after stream. I'm just trying to say, like, I'm burnt out. I'd like to go to bed, please. And also, is it OK that I'd like to prioritize this and still feel like, hey, I'm tired? Is that OK? Because people will do this thing where those like, no, just work less but i i want to prioritize working i'm not complaining that i can't see you i'm saying is it okay that i choose work and then people are like but you should have more time for me because you're more like people literally said to me you're doing so well at work so i assume you have more job to more time to hang out and i'm like no i'm doing better at work because i'm not hanging out as much and mm. i would like to prioritize this because i have to you, make a well, retirement uh, my thing is, is do you feel like you're kind of projecting your experience onto hassan a little bit and maybe that's why yeah in my opinion you're overly empathetic because you have well, fibromyalgia yeah. as part of your issue too which is yeah. just going to burn it's going to burn you much quicker um than hassan is going to burn too true so but i, I like don't know maybe, what he's going through right i know he has an eating yeah, but, disorder but, i know he has some stuff i don't know an e- what eating disorder does he have and what, he's literally had it for years bro he even told like ethan to got, back off he has a he has an eating disorder in relation to like body dysmorph body dysmorphia or dysphoria body dysphoria okay. and um he binges and in, in um i think he he starves himself because he he used to be a fat kid right so he like struggles okay well, I'm so a I don't, fat I don't kid know. now. Yeah, but, well. <laughs> uh, so he might have that, but I don't think that that's the same issue as somebody with fibromyalgia. Yeah, where maybe you're probably in significantly more pain just on default than other people. Yeah, um, I guess I don't want to give myself an excuse if I can't give other people like an explanation of like feeling. I look, I I work on introspection and philosophy, and there's one thing I know about mm-hmm. people is all people suffer. But yeah, all but people I think suffer that differently, that's, right? Uh, that's one of the things where I feel like when you – and I think it's a beautiful thing, uh, focusing on people and being very person-centric. You know, my wife works in a person-centric yeah. uh, field. Yeah. But I also think that sometimes we can go a little too far and have a little too much empathy. And I know that sounds rude, but I think that there are times where it's okay to be empathetic and then it's okay to not – force yourself to be empathetic all the time like i don't Ooh, I think like it's, with vosh it's like i can understand how you got there but also bro no <laughs> i guess i fucking hate vosh so I, yeah yeah yeah, know, yeah. But, vosh was hard um, or even sneeko like i really feel for sneeko that doesn't mean i condone his behavior but i also know how he got there and like a sure. lot of people are gonna get there that way too and so yeah, yeah. I think like and I, I and, yeah. Uh, yeah with Sneeko I I mean I, I get what you're saying like yeah it's okay to be compassionate but there's a certain point where you stop being compassionate you stop caring and like with Sneeko it's because he's just a disrespectful asshole um <laughs> and it's like that's a lot of it right yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's where I'm at you know I understand yeah. that you have like a relatable experience with Hassan I also understand as a content creator feeling like you have to maintain a certain type of content which is the content you're doing now to maintain relevancy and it's very scary to change yeah I totally sure. understand that for sure um like I. I was like a very large TikToker at one time. So like I understand feeling locked into content, but it's those lows that at least in my experience, and I might be very privileged, privileged, those lows are create opportunities to like get back to a high. True, um, true. And like Hassan's in a low, stream less. I genuinely, and you too, stream less. Yeah. <laughs> stream less. Um, you know, if you want to talk like my, I could talk with you offline or even now about like the content strategy I've been trying to engage in which I'm still working out like the shorts and clip stuff, but like TikTok, anything over a minute, once you get monetized, it can be very financially fruitful. Yeah. Um, Yes. A real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. I also resent the idea of calling it a real job. Hey, newsflash, streaming and content creation is a real job. I pay my goddamn tax. If it wasn't a real job, I wouldn't have to pay fucking tax. I also think we need to stop doing this because it is sending a very bad message to people. Streaming content creation anything you pay tax on that's a real job okay i am working it is working it is all working everything you pay tax on it it's a job 
Okay. I really resent this idea that like, oh, it's not a real job. I had to work three fucking jobs to even get to work these three fucking jobs. I switched out multiple jobs in the outside content world for multiple jobs in the content world. That's what I did. It's fucking work. Okay. Weird. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. A real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. That is incorrect. Lots of jobs suck the soul out of lots of people because we're not in the right careers. We're not at peace with ourselves. We're not having a good relationship with our consciousness. We're not in our joy. We do feel like this job is sucking the soul from me. And that happens to everyone in every industry. It is not unique to streaming. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Shut that shit off, please. I think he meant socially. Again, I'm having good faith with it because I think a lot of people keep like, like everyone wants to pretend like being a streamer is a dream job. If it was a dream job, you would do it. It's it's a very hard fucking job. It's not easy. It's not easy any more than anyone else's job is easy. Even a dr job you love. My dad owns his own business. He loves it. It's not easy. Just because you love something doesn't mean it's easy. Oh my God, you're an athlete. That's a very hard job. Oh, but you love it, right? It doesn't matter. So again, I think I can have grace with this because I just think everyone has the right to feel burnt out from their job. And everyone has the right to feel like this is soul sucking me, right? Like I, I think everyone has the right to feel like burnt out on working and paying seven dollars for eggs. Shut up. Come on, just keep listening. Oh. So yeah, true. Michael says half the time people shit on fast food workers saying this isn't a real job. That needs to stop. That is a real job. Oh God. What? So a nurse is not that doesn't have a real job? Hold, you know what? According to the sound, people took them out of context. So let's see the full video. Okay. This, yeah. No, 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 no. No, social right, battery wise, unless you're in retail, unless you're in fucking retail, it's very different. You're out of touch. I'm going to die, dude. There's motherfuckers who are accountants in here and they're misunderstanding what I'm saying. A real job does not expend your social battery in the same way as someone who did a sales job, a real job. Okay. I'm telling you, as someone who did, did both, nine hours of, of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out from social scenarios. After nine hours of that, I could probably do fucking physical labor. It would not bother me, but I can't fucking do more social shit. That's my point. There are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons. Service sector, people pleasing jobs would be very similar. Those are like, I think, customer service type shit. But like, if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited, way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine Again, hours. Again, he's talking about his social battery. We've watched this three times now. Hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what, that's what like sucks your, your social battery and you just tap out after it. Yeah, think about it this way. Mm -hmm. Like you give presentations for your job, right? Imagine giving a presentation for nine hours straight. It's like- Also, I just want to say, I not only do I think fast food jobs are real jobs and minimum wage jobs are incredibly real jobs, I think they make the world go round in such a significant way that I think if America really cared about its workers, we would make those jobs really decent jobs. We would make them reasonable jobs for workers um, who wanted to work them, of course. And then we would like make them really nice jobs and we would make them within reason income, not the highest earners, but reasonable income. They could afford life and we would make life work for people. We'd have higher quality fast food. We'd have better customer service, a better turnaround, like uh, less of a turnaround of employees switching out of the jobs. And we would have people happy at their jobs and they would go home and hang out with their families and they'd be happy. Most people would be content with their jobs if they felt like they were being paid fairly and they had enough time to have downtime. That's what people want. If you want downtime, do not be a streamer. It's very exhausting. It's very hard to have downtime as a streamer who's serious about their career. And when I say serious, I mean, again, this is not a job that like transfers over to other jobs. So if you're a streamer for your life, you you can't get like fired and then like move on to a different streaming job. So, okay, it's a little different. It's a little bit different. So you have to be very careful with this job. But like every other job, if they were, if it was like more reasonable 
and 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 better pay and health benefits and all those things, I think people would be happy working at McDonald's and then they would come the fuck home and relax. I think in and outs a good job. I think all these jobs could be great jobs. Target, re- like retail, all these things could be great if people weren't overworked and underpaid and if there were benefits for people. How many of these businesses hired these people and and scheduled them just below 40 hours so they don't get benefits? I don't know why we're pretending these aren't real jobs. They are real jobs. You guys are just abusing your workers and then you're wondering why everyone's unhappy and burnt out and everyone feels that's why that's why they're offended at Hassan because they are working these soul crushing jobs and they feel like, what the fuck? What am I doing here? And it is soul crushing. It is soul crushing to look at the system, look at you and say, like, we believe you and you. You're the back of this country and then not make housing affordable, not make your food affordable, not make your jobs, you know, uh, I guess they pay you enough. It's it's of course, it's fucking soul crushing. So obviously Hassan feels, I guess, like disconnected from the rest of the people because of this. But to say that streaming isn't hard, to then say streaming isn't a real job, to then say streaming doesn't, you know, that's not true true either. Streaming is very exhausting. It is a real job and it's harder in a lot of ways and it's easier in some ways. But again, I just feel like everyone wants to point the finger at everyone else and say like, I have it harder than you. Everyone has it easier than you. Everyone has it harder than you. Stop pointing fingers. You know what I mean? We should just treat people better and give them better livable wages and fucking better rent prices. After a while, you'd be like, I don't want to talk ever again. <laughs> That's the context. Mm-hmm. I don't know what jobs you you worked at, but it seems like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And you so- I think people are being dishonest with Hassan. I really do. But I think it's true that like, He's talking about he's obviously got a specific thing in mind because he mentioned retail jobs being exhausting. He gave an example of like an accountant job. He actually gave the context. I feel like why is everyone not listening to him? Saying people that are not doing a people pleasing job. Sometimes the people that you have to judge, sometimes the people that you have to please in your job are your bosses. Or coworkers. Or coworkers. Sometimes you're doing those jobs and they are the one that are draining you. You're cool. That's true. That's true. I think Hassan is wrong in that. Most jobs, I think, are socially draining on a lot of people. Workers, your 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 definition of what a client is is very limited. A client can be someone from outside of your work comes into your work, and then you have to serve them. But a, a client can also be other departments of your job that depend on your position. That's okay. considered a client. Mm-hmm. And that's people pleasing when you have to work with other departments and have to bend over backwards to just make sure no problems exist. You are people pleasing. If, if every no, I just don't think you're right, Starvos. You said, dude, I used to open shop at 4 p.m. and work 8 to 12 hours. You realize how entitled this guy sounds to someone that has worked any day in his life. He can go work at McDonald's and see if he doesn't like it. Yeah, I just think like, again, he does have a lived experience that is different. And I think we're all taking it like everyone feels I don't I just don't take it personal. First of all, Hassan doesn't know me. And second of all, why take it personal? And second of all, like, I just don't think that's true. It's like, like, I don't know what Hassan's working history is like, but I think a lot of people feel this way who don't even understand his like you guys feel this way about him. He feels this way about other people. But he also he did caveat a bunch of what he said. Like, he really did caveat it. He said, retail jobs are out. So, Starvos, he gave your example. He agrees with you. He said working at McDonald's would be hard. So, he already agrees with you. He's not disagreeing with you. He he said specifically jobs that take little to no social time, which is true. There are jobs out there that need less social interaction. But I would argue that to somebody, any social interaction is too much. You know what I mean? Ha, Discord says, has, has Hassan ever been an accountant, though? Like, I trust his view in relation to any job he's worked, but does that does he know an accountant who's grinding out mathematical calculations and financial analysts? But what does that have to do with social? Guys, we're not talking about stress. Discord says, doesn't, doesn't have more stressful job. He didn't say stress. He said social battery. Hassan said social battery. He didn't say stress. It has nothing to do with what job is harder. It was social battery. So Discord, great example of exactly what he's not talking about, right? It didn't say more stressful. He said social battery. So yes, if you're an accountant doing mathematics all day and you're not interacting with any clients, that's who he's talking about. Now, of course, if you're a client during or an accountant during tax season, you were doing nothing but socializing, obviously. 
But Hassan never said anything about what job was harder. He said, social battery, social battery. Now, he did say soul sucking, which I think makes people think that he means harder. But he said social. Sorry, earphone workers. Sorry, my headphones. Sorry, 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 sorry. He said social battery. Okay, social battery. Brittany, they are going at the soul crushing part. Y'all are talking past each other. But the soul crushing part is in relation to the social battery, right? Like, again, guys, no matter how good your life is, you're allowed to be exhausted from socializing. I don't know why privilege changes being exhausted because you've socialized too much, right? It's giving hasn't worked in corporate. Well, he probably can't work in corporate because it takes too many spoons. I would kill myself in corporate. It's like you guys want people to kill themselves. It's like people want people to kill themselves so they know before they talk. What if Hassan is literally saying, yeah, I just would rather die, right? I would never work in corporate. I'd want to kill myself. And I'm saying we should know that about ourselves. We should know that working with people makes us want to die because it's too much social. It doesn't mean that this is still isn't too much social. This is still a lot of social for me, right? So again, like when we're talking about like what is socializing, you know what I mean? Like what are we talking? He's talking about social battery, okay? Six months, you have to have a report. And you're not dealing with people outside of your work. You're just dealing with people inside of your work. And every six months, every six months, your boss me meets you and is like, yeah, we're going to see how you're doing at the job. I, People are allowed to be tired. You have to please your people, which are your bosses and whatever standards that there is in the company. Here's the truth about our favorite champagne socialist. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a socialist and everybody hates him. I'm so tired. You guys are all brain dead. I love you all. But everyone is so brain dead. Yes, it's funny to make fun of Hassan the socialist. But genuinely, it's so brain dead to keep going after him. Like any of you have good, clean reputations behind closed doors. Okay? Except Abba and Preach. They're beautiful. But again, why are we going after him like this? Because it's easy and it brings in views. You are milking this man for views instead of being nuanced about the thought. The compassionate thought is no matter who he is, he's still allowed to suffer and be tired. The compassionate thought is like being compassionate. Go ahead and suffer with Hassan. It's hard, isn't it? Because he's privileged and he's handsome and he's rich. But genuinely, I get it. I 100% can be compassionate with Hassan because I, after stream, am so socially drained. This is about being socially drained. He's not complaining about his job. He's not complaining about anything else. He's saying it's specific. You know why it's unique? Because after your regular jobs, your friends do hang out with you. After regular jobs, a lot of people wait for the weekend. A lot of people want to socialize after work. That's why when you think about streaming, he's just clarifying a stereotype that people might not realize. After streaming, you are drained, right? It is very hard to want to socialize after. Some people can do it. Some people can't. But there's an assumption even I get from people in my life that like you should be able to be energetic. Oh, my God, are you rejecting me because you don't have the spoons? And I'm like, bro, I'm just so tired. I just want to go to bed. But they think, but all you did was stream today. All you did was stream. You didn't do anything. And that fucking sucks. It's like, bro, I didn't just stream today. I'm socially exhausted. I can't think. If you try to talk to me, I'm just going to be angry at you because I have no energy. Do you want to hang out with me when I'm grumpy? I used all my happiness for stream. Now I am grumpy. Okay. So again, I have worked. I understand. I work multiple jobs. I always do. You always have to. At the end of the day, okay, it's okay to be tired after work. You're allowed, no matter how privileged you feel, Mark Cuban is also allowed to feel tired after work. Um, athletes are also allowed to feel tired after work. Movie stars and singers are allowed to feel tired after work. Your mom is allowed to feel tired after work. Your stay-at-home dad is allowed to feel tired after work. You are allowed to feel tired after work. He comes from one of the richest families in Turkey. Okay. He's incredibly wealthy. I, you know, every time someone brings this up, I have not seen any proof that they have any money anymore because there's been misinformation spread around about him being a trust fund baby, about him having a lot of money. I do not know that any money exists. I've known so many fake wealthy people, especially Middle Eastern people who pretend they have money when they don't. We have no idea how much this family actually has. And until I see it on paper, I don't believe it. 
I don't believe it. Because again, you guys are assuming he has money. You're assuming his parents give him money. His mom lives with him. His mom needed him to buy a house. So what if they're just another fake rich family that thinks they're rich, but they really did lose everything like Hassan says they did? That's really common for a lot of people to go from a lot of wealth to no money, which is probably why Hassan has a scarcity mindset and keeps working his ass off because he, he's afraid he might lose all his money like his dad did. We are getting mixed information on this like origin story of Hassan. And look, don't I'm already annoyed. I have to defend Hassan here. OK, but Hassan does support his family financially as far as I know. I know his mom lives with him. I don't know where his dad is, if his dad lives with him, but like they don't have money. They did at some point, but they say they don't have it anymore. That's really common for a lot of people. Apparently, uh, dad had a gambling problem and lost the money. Okay, that happens to a lot of families. I don't know if that's true, but that's what chat's saying. I'm just saying, stop thinking he's rich. He might have been rich at one point. I don't know if he's rich anymore. So again, I don't know why being cruel to people is, is that a poor person thing? Oh, do poor people, are we just cruel to people? Is that what our MO is? Do do people want to be known as being cruel to people, whether they're rich or not? Like, how fucked up is that? How are you different than the rich people you hate who are cruel towards poor people or middle class people? And here you are, no empathy, no compassion, just zero fucking good faith. Well, that's kind of shitty. Like, that's kind of fucking shitty. I guess humans are shitty whether they're poor or rich, huh? Just shitty behavior, guys. Shitty behavior. He's always been from a wealthy family. And so this trust fund baby goes on to be a very successful streamer and makes it. You don't really know about this hard work life. That's why a lot of these dudes who before the people. Okay, a lot of people don't know about hard work life. People say because my dad had a business. I don't know about hard work life. Okay, people say like, oh, because my parents were able to live in a nice neighborhood. No hard work life, even though we grew up in the poor neighborhood in the nice neighborhoods. That doesn't even mean anything. I just didn't grow up with gangs around me. So what? I'm like privileged. Okay, everyone thinks that about everyone. Everybody looks at everybody and goes, you didn't grow up with a hard life. You didn't grow up with a hard life. Everyone didn't grow up with a hard life. There's always somebody who grew up harder than you. But to you, it's still hard. You're allowed to feel like you had a hard life. You know what I mean? It just feels really strange that we're all pointing fingers and say, you didn't grow up with a hard life. You don't know people's lives, bro. You do not know people's lives, bro. Like, I agree. I can, we can say this about some people that at some point, Hassan's life was not that hard. But we don't know how consistent that's been. We don't know if that's true. Lots of people had a hard life. And some people do the opposite where they like deny they had a hard life. Like, oh, my life was fine. My life was easy. And you find out their life was very hard. But it's like they don't want to own it because they don't want to come off like a complainer, which to be fair, nobody likes a complainer. Like what even is a hard life? You know what I mean? Never come from backgrounds that are actually of the people. He is top 1% today. And even back then when he was part of his family, he was top 0.1% in Turkey. The truth about Hassan, him talking about... But they don't have that money anymore. According to Discord, his father lost it in trading. And according to chat, he lost it in gambling. I don't know which one is true. They don't have money now. And that's the point. They don't have money now. At work and everybody misunderstanding and they're being really stupid and low IQ when they're listening to his responses. This is just a brat who's always been a bit rich brat. And he's talking about real jobs like he has the experience, but he doesn't. And he's not the only one <clears throat> because... As how much is Hassan's net worth probably? Like a million? Uh, two million? I don't know how much he makes. Mm, I don't know how much these people, like what are they worth is the question. I don't know how much he's worth. Asmund Gold, okay. I love Asmund Gold. React to this. I actually like Asmund. Uh, I think Asmund Gold is cool. Even if he looks homeless every day. I love him so much. I love Asmund. He is my favorite homeless millionaire streamer. This has been my opinion, observing most streamers and content creators. Most of them are complete out of touch with reality. So people are getting mad. It's a bad take. What's it a bad take of? He says that he gets exhausted socially because he's talking to people for nine hours a day. You really think that's... You really think that's not true? Yeah. How fucked up is to think that's not true, guys? Like, what the fuck? That's not what he said. That is I mean, you really said. think it's not true? That's not the only... That is what he said. ...thing that he said. But that is what he said mostly. He was wrong to say that other jobs aren't as socially draining, but that is ultimately what he said. That was the point, is he was trying to convey this misunderstanding that streamers aren't exhausted after stream. He didn't say that he's drained because he's 
working nine hours a day and he's talking to people for nine. That is what he said, though. Nine hours a day. I can understand that. I can understand the fact that you're going to be drained. Talking of, he said that his job does not is more draining than any normal job. No, he did not say that. He said, he said not job. No, he didn't say that. It sounded like he said that, but he did give. He gave examples of what jobs he was talking about. He thinks a lot of jobs aren't as social, which I don't think is true. But guys, networking as a entertainer is different than networking at any other job and is different than working at a, a tech job. It's different than working at this job. It's different than working at this job. Lots of you can get away with barely networking and being successful. When you're a streamer, it's all networking. Like people are always telling Hassan to get like bigger content creators on his channel. He's like, guys, I'm not famous like that. I can't just call up movie stars and be like, come on my stream. People think Hassan is like, you know, just got like all the networking privileges. He doesn't have those kinds of privileges. Okay. So again, I really think like they're not, they have to listen. You have to listen to the clip multiple times. You do. You have to listen to it multiple times. Excluding retail, to be fair. Yes. Okay. There, Abba. Thank you. Excluding retail and other social jobs. So Hassan is wrong to say that not all jobs can be soul crushing because I think all jobs can be soul crushing. But in terms of socially, well, obviously there are jobs that aren't socially soul crushing, right? That's why people pick them. And, 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 and life doesn't work like that. Nope. If he just if he just had said my work, what I do. He should have made it more. Per I agree with Preach. He should have made it more personal. Like I, Hassan, feel this way about my job. He did generalize it to other people. But to be fair, a lot of streamers do. I mean, even Ab and Preach have done this with men and women and gender, you know, gender politics. So I think we all do that. But the mistake is that Hassan should have made it about him instead of all jobs or in comparison to these jobs. Who right now is extremely draining. You would have just said that. I would have been like, yeah, my man. But what did he say? But you said that your job is more draining than any normal real job. Which is not true. He didn't he didn't say that though. He you got like it's so out of it's so bad faith. The reason I say it's bad faith is because it's not like, oh, I hate that you're making me defend Hassan so badly here. Ugh, it, it really isn't good faith. Like, I want it to be as cranky as everybody else, but I just couldn't because I'm like, that's not what he said. I listened to it like five, six times now. He compared it to other jobs that he ex is excluding in the comparison. He was very clear about the differences he was talking about. He did, I think, misspeak in saying like, um, you know, the soul crushing part. But also, what does that mean, right? Um, I just, I, again, I don't, I feel like this is a little too dishonest, like a little too clickbaity. No. Fucking no, my guy. It doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. Nothing works like that. But what you're gonna include you're gonna include nurses? You're gonna talk to me about people in the force? Yeah, but they're saying socially doesn't drain their batteries. It could. It could. But a lot of those people party it up. Let's be real. Those people in the military be partying it the fuck up, especially the young guys. A lot of people are social and also it's individualistic. Some guys in the military are going to be introverted and they're not going to want to party on the weekends or after work. Some people are. Some people work 12 hour shifts and can't wait to socialize after. Some people aren't. Hassan was just saying for streamers, it's different. He should have said Contrary to popular belief, streaming is incredibly draining and socially I'm kind of wiped at the end of it and I don't really want to hang out with my friends, which sucks. And I know a lot of people think that because I'm just talking and I'm sitting in a chair, I'm going to have energy. But actually, contrary to popular belief, I'm actually super fucking drained and it sucks. But yeah, I can't hang out with you guys. And then some douchebag somewhere is going to be like, um, I work in the military and I have lots of energy after my job. Um, I'm a nurse and I have lots of energy after my job. Oh, I'm a YouTuber and I have lots of energy after my job. Why doesn't Hassan? And that's the other shitty part is like he's going to say it's just him. And then you guys are still going to find a reason to be pissed at him because, because you're going to say, well, I'm not tired after stream. So why are you? And that's the part that gets annoying. No matter how you talk about it, someone's going to see you as like complaining and different from them. And that is the nuance I want to bring to this conversation. Okay? That's the nuance. No matter how he says it, he's going to piss off somebody. And that's the problem. Is like, even Papa Gut said it. Well, why can't, like, I'm not drained. I can edit my videos after stream. Okay, but I can't. I am drained. I'm glad you're not drained, but I'm drained. Oh, you make your own schedule. Change your hours. 
well, I can't. I work in Croatia, so I have to work overnight so I can appeal to him. Oh, well, then why don't, yes, I agree with you. We pick and choose. That's what we do with all of our lives. Something is going to be hard in life, guys. It's called adulting. Pick and choose your battles. Be smart with your battles, right? Like, that's all we're doing. That's what I'm saying. Don't complain. Just vent sometimes. Get it off your chest. But do something about it. So pick and choose. There's always going to be something that's not perfect. Still a great life, right? I'd rather live in Croatia than pay American prices. Sucks for you guys. But that means I have to work overnight. Okay, no problem. No problem. But like, obviously, sometimes it's it's exhausting when I can't be awake for my friends and family. But you know, what are you going to do? I hope they understand. It's like, yeah, everything you do will have a constant pros and cons to everything, guys. Pros and cons. You're dealing. What are you talking? I know you trolling. You just trolling. Uh, but, but I think his point is that a lot of these people who work in these kinds of jobs after work, they like to go out. They like to go out, that's grab not. beers. You know what I mean? Accountants will do that. But Ooh, then have, that's a lot of everybody. people. A lot of people. That's a couple of people. And if, if it was so, the, the city would be filled with happy hour would be every day. Happy hour is on Thursday. It would be filled with people every night. Now, some people, they go home. You know why they go home? Because after they go to work, even if they don't feel like it, they got families to attend to. It depends. It depends on the lifestyle and where you're at. Lots of people, lots of my siblings, they talk about how their friends want to go out every day after work. Other siblings, they're in different age groups. It depends on your friend's age groups, if you're single, if you have kids. Hassan doesn't have a family. It's different. Everyone has different priorities. Yes, me. And Abin Preach, we're in our 30s. We're old. Hassan's in his 30s, but he still dresses like he's in, you know what I'm saying? It's like everyone has a different lifestyle. So that could be true. But every bar, every bar open every night, guys. And they got to do that. That is so out of touch. So stu That is a stupid take. All right. And him back in. Let it play for a little bit. And then we'll go. That after you spend nine hours being investigated by thousands of people, with every facial movement, everything you say, every word, with people constantly trying to disagree with you and fight with you. That's not emotionally, or sorry, like socially draining. This is totally understandable. Do I know the biggest privilege these guys got? Got what? They choose to stream nine hours. 100%. They literally can turn it off after four. They can turn it off after five. But because they want to make more money, mm -hmm. they keep streaming. And then they want to get up here and then... Keep in mind, Asmongol takes care of his family. Hassan takes care of his family. These are streamers who are also taking care of elderly people and people who depend on them. So they also, in fairness, take care of their families, right? So it's a little bit different when you have responsibilities. That's what Andrew Schultz said. See, ABBA, does ABBA has, have the same Andrew, energy for Andrew Schultz? Because Andrew Schultz said the same thing in a podcast. Because they were like, how much you made? Do you make like 10 million? He goes, I won't tell you, but I need to make a certain number to take care of my family because now people are depending on me. So to be honest with you, you could also say that about Andrew Schultz. Like you make enough money, you don't have to do it anymore. But not if you're taking care of family, not if you're trying to make more money and at the height where you can. Like we don't have these opportunities, guys. Like we, I hope to have this opportunity. I hope to make enough money to offer some sort of financial something to my parents or to the people who need me in my life, right? But like not everybody even makes enough money in their lifetime. But if you have that opportunity, you know what I mean? Then at that point, you would take it and it would be exhausting. So yes, as a single man, Hassan and Asman don't have to stream. But as people who take care of family members, as people that are taking care of their retirement, as people that are like, yeah, they want to stream so they can make as much money now. So when they're 40 and 50 or 60, or if they have a heart attack or a stroke at 70, they don't have to work. But most of us are never going to get this chance. Most of us, it would be so foolish for you to take an opportunity as a big streamer and not spend it on making as much money as possible. It'd be different if you had kids. If you had kids, I would say take off work to be with your children. But they don't have kids. Asmin and Hassan are taking care of their parents. So their parents don't need them to work less. Their parents probably need them to work more. You know what I mean? So that's very different. You know, this would be so silly of them to give up this opportunity right now when they don't have children. If you don't have kids, you should be working, right? If you want to excel. They're obviously top streamers, so they obviously know what they're doing. 
And also, like, if they're never going to have kids, obviously you would put it into your work. And then obviously you can take a day off, which Hassan does. But like, again, you're still allowed to be tired. You're still allowed to say, like, I'm socially drained. That's all he said is I'm socially drained. He's allowed to be. He's allowed to prioritize work and be socially drained. Right? Complain about how hard it is. Mm -hmm. Who here gets to choose their fucking hours at work? Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know why people think this is true. I don't have this lived experience as a streamer. Yes, I can take days off, but I don't make money when I do. And also, you can choose your own wor working hours at a lot of jobs. You know what I mean? I don't understand this narrative. You can make your own hours, but you still have to work more hours than the average person as a streamer. You do not work less hours. Do not let these fucking streamers convince you. We are. I'm working 12 hour days minimum. I don't know what world these people are living where they're not working at least 12 hours, which by the way, is more than the average person. So why are we sitting here and pretending like people aren't, if we're working, they're working 12 to 15 hours a day because it's not just the time they're streaming either. It's all the social media afterwards. It's answering emails. It's getting back to people. All this shit is exhausting. I don't even want to answer my doctor's emails, let alone someone's like collab email. So again, like you choose your own hours, but you still have to work hours. You don't, guys, choosing your own hours doesn't mean you get to choose to work two hours, right? Like we choose our own hours, but that doesn't mean we choose to work two hours. You still have to work 12 hours. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I just don't understand why people keep saying that. Like that's, a, I don't understand that narrative. What is the point of that? Like he can work to live cheaper. He can switch his life over, but it would be so silly. It'd be weird. It would, he would only make that decision if it was truly impacting his life in like a negative way. So like spiritually, like Gideon gave up his YouTube career to follow Christ. That's valid. But that's like a, that's a philosophy. That's valid, right? Like otherwise, why would Gideon give up his career? So if, he, if, if, if um, Hassan had like a, was like, hey guys, I'm choosing my mental health over my job. Yeah, obviously. But like, even if you love your job, you can still get exhausted. All he said was that he's socially drained. Why are we blowing this up in the weirdest way possible? Like, why are we blowing this up? Like, why are we being so weird about this? What? Like, I'm so confused. Why are we being so weird about this? You can't really choose your hours, though. The audience has to work and sleep. Well, obviously, like, I choose to stream when my audience is most active. So you guys actually pick my hours. Congratulations. I don't actually pick my streaming hours because that's not how streaming works. You got to pick where your audience, when your audience is mostly awake you, on YouTube. So I actually moved my stream schedule to you guys. My analytics tell me when you guys are mostly on the internet. So, you know. Um... Yeah, I don't understand what people mean when they say you get to choose your own hours. It just depends on what you're doing. Like, what is your goal? You know? But Hassan didn't complain about making content. He didn't complain about working. Like, Hassan didn't say he didn't like his job. Hassan just said, I'm socially drained after work. And he's feeling like that's, he's just burning out. You're allowed to burn out at work. Not a lot of people. The fact that you guys even have the gall to compare yourselves to regular people when your extra hours of labor or rewarded yeah but just fyi all these average people that keep saying their dream job is to be a streamer then do it then fucking do it but you can't because it's fucking harder than anything you've ever done but it's not harder than anything you've ever done both things are true at the same time right both things are so true at the same time H hear me on this all those average people that are like if i could switch jobs with hassan i would then do it but you can't because it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. But you also have done harder things. And that is the hardest truth we have to remember. Bezos is Abin Preacher and streamers. They choose their own hours as a streamer. It's different. That's true. Abin Preacher, not streamers. And they make money filming videos, editing it, and posting it. They probably work far less hours in general, but also probably work more hours doing other things. Jordan says, I'm a therapist and I choose my own hours, but I 1000% work more than the hours I'm scheduled during notes, training, creating documents, doing research. I think it's like that for every contractor. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think it's something more like that where people are thinking, oh my God, it's so cool. You get to make your own hours. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, sure. Kay says, this sounds like brownie suffering for extra suffering as if someone also experiencing suffering is taking away from their suffering. I think that's what it is, Kay. I think people are convinced that Hassan can't suffer because if I was in his position, I wouldn't suffer. But that's like not how life works. If you were Hassan, you'd also complain. 
You know what I mean? Like everyone burns out. Everyone can complain. You shouldn't complain. You should vent to your friends and therapists and maybe to your stream on occasion, right? Like, again, I think everyone is just like getting way too emotional and personal about this. I think if you have worked a hard job, then you should know how hard it is to be a streamer. That's my that's my belief. But see, I've worked both jobs, so I know both are hard. I just think they're differently hard. I think streaming is just as hard as a regular job. They're just completely different games. I just think they're totally, totally different. I think being a teacher is just as hard as working in construction. It's just different. I just think it's different. I think it's all hard. I just think it's differently hard in different ways. And that's why people don't pick it. That's why if you had to do it for a day, it would be hard. It's like stay, It's like dads who work and think like being a stay-at-home mom is so easy, then you do it. And after they do it, they often are like, this is too hard. I don't want to do it. Yeah, go ahead and do something you think is easy because you're not doing it. Same with Hassan. He forgets, right? It's soul crushing to work any job out there. It is. Now, not to everyone. Not everyone is feeling soul crushed by their job. I don't think my job is soul crushing. I like my job. But also, it's still a job. It's going to get tiring after a while. It's going to be exhausting sometimes. I'm going to get drained. It's still a job. But it's a good job. Uh, all jobs are hard. That's why you got to pick one that doesn't feel like the worst thing ever, every day. You know? With more and more money is insane. It's it's like the levels of disconnected people. Like why? I should also resent the fact that these are also millionaires trying to pretend they're still average. And I think I hate that too. I think I do kind of hate the disconnect because all these content creators that are still probably really connected to averagey people, like, I don't know. My average people do think my job is hard and also easy and also hard. I think it's weird to think like people's jobs aren't hard, right? But just a reminder that Adam and Preacher are also pretty well off. I don't know if they're millionaires, but I'm assuming they are, right? Destiny's a millionaire. Asmund's a millionaire. And everyone's having a different response to this, okay? But, like, just keep in mind that, like, you know, I also think it's, you know. We feel any sympathy or give a shit about what your struggles is. You're literally choosing it. That's like you. Everyone is choosing it. All of you are choosing your jobs. All of us average people are choosing their jobs. Average people are also choosing their jobs. The only thing he is choosing is to continue making money. If he wanted to make 50K a year, he could. He doesn't want to make 50K a year and none of you would either. Okay. Again, I don't like this narrative that we're running into. Hassan got lucky a couple of times and took that luck and ran with it, which was smart business wise. I hope I'm less lucky eventually. Right. But ultimately, I'm fine making average people money. But also, what is average people money? Right. So again, I just this idea again. Mm, 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 I don't know if people are being really honest with themselves. I don't think people are being honest. You do it for money. Yeah, but like, okay, again, we all choose our life. And then complaining, it hurts. Wow, this slap was hard. Slap oh, softer. <laughs> don't slap yourself, dumbass. Nobody cares. You have a job where you're extremely gifted and privileged. Nobody cares. You choose your hours. Shut the f about your problems. And certainly, if you're gonna talk about it, don't compare yourself to regular people. I'm just even, I'm even gonna throw OnlyFans, OnlyFans models in there. And all the ex workers and stuff like that. Because what they have to do to make the money that we shut the f up. Yes. See, this feels so. Uh, what's that word? What's that word? Um, virtue signaling? Thanks for throwing sex workers in there, I guess. Like, it's the same shit. Sex working, streaming, same shit, bro. You sell your mind, body, and soul for fucking money. Same thing. Okay, we all do it. Comedians, they sell their mind, body, and soul to the audience. I don't know what we're fucking, why are we all playing a game here? Chev Chewy? Chewy, welcome to memberships. Let's go. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. I don't know why. This feels so virtue signaling to me. You know what I mean? Nobody cares about anybody. Nobody cares about anybody. People don't care about McDonald's workers. McDonald's workers don't care about them. You don't care about them. They don't care about you. People tell me sex work isn't a real job. Oh, but now I've been preacher saying it's a real job. Oh, but streaming's not a real job. Oh, but streaming's a real job. Sex working isn't a real job. 
You know how many people have been like, OnlyFans isn't a real job. At least streamers have to be talented and debate people. (gasps) Streaming's not a real job. At least they have to do sex work. Sex work is selling your body. You're all fucking in bubbles and you all think you all have like the like, what is it called? The, like you're the only ones who suffer, bro. You act like you're the only ones who suffer, bro. Everybody be suffering. Okay? Like it's all fucking work and everyone is suffering. Congratulations. Because I wouldn't do that. No. Shout outs to them. Turn it off. The shit that they would have to do to me. Please, I love you, Abin Preach, but don't be out here acting like you pro sex work all of a sudden. Like you give a fuck. This is virtue signaling. They've never given a fuck about sex work. They literally have made tons of. Like, don't even fucking. Okay, don't even fucking start. <laughs> don't even fucking start. That amount. Shut up. Do you guys realize? Oh my. Literally, days. if they wanted to. This is something that you regular people can't do because you're literally going to lose your homes. You know what they need to do? Just to solve all their problems? Not do it! What? What happened? That's the third that shit up! Oh, do, it do it again, do it again, do it again! I'm gonna turn it off! Do it, do it again, do it again! Do it again, do it again! Do it again! Do it again! Do it again. Do it again. Someone actually said real job, what does that mean? A real job is a job that you have, bullshit jobs are the ones that other people have. It's just that simple. That's true. That's kind of what's happening. It's like everyone is acting like, oh, I have a real job, but you don't have a real job. Oh, I have a real job, but you don't have a real job. Asmin's making a joke. No, no, okay. This is why I don't understand if these people ever work. What a bullshit job is a job where you are paid to literally just exist. No, that's not a bullshit job. A bullshit job is a job you don't like you. A bullshit job to me would be like a job. What's a bullshit job? Is there such a thing as a bullshit job? Wait, what's a bullshit job? I guess you could say a bullshit job is like a fake job you make to get around taxes. But like, what's a bullshit job? Is there such a thing as a bullshit job? Who has a bullshit job? Streaming is not a bullshit job. That's fucked up to say, bro. As a content creator, that's really fucked up to say. You're a number. Like, if you've ever worked for the government, there's a lot of bullshit jobs there. Why? Because the government just got money to spend. They got to meet certain quotas. Okay. So they literally hire people. I've been told this on my job. You're there to look busy. Do you know how? Okay, yeah. There are definitely a lot. But that's still a job, bitch. I'm still working. Fuck you. No, no, no. That's still a job. Bullshit jobs is a job. If the government got money to spend and they want to pay me to sit around, that's a job. As far as I'm concerned, I got out of bed. I put on some clothes. That's a job. How fucking crazy that is. That is a bullshit job. I could get my eight hours of work done in two hours, but I have to not do that so I can look busy throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still a job, bro. Do I, Can I go home? Still a job. Do I do I have to be there? Still a job. Or else if I finish it too fast, I'm too productive. Either they give me another- I've heard of these jobs. Still a job. A bunch of bullshit work, or they'll just literally tell me you're reprimanded for not doing your job. What the fuck is that? That is what it's called a bullshit job. Those exist. Yeah, still a job. Those exist in huge numbers. And what? So good for you, bro. Get that. That sounds like a dream job, bro. Go, let's let's go get those jobs, bro. Are they hiring? Yeah, let's go get those jobs, bro. There's real jobs. They're not the same thing. He makes thousands of dollars a day. Him trying, him making takes, trying to relate to normal working people is fucking stupid. I do think him trying to relate to normal working people. It's probably not the smartest politically, but I think even me, I've worked normal jobs my whole life and people still discount me because now I'm a streamer or now I'm a YouTuber. So I don't think like it matters. It doesn't matter if you've come from nowhere. People will still discount you because like you make money now. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter where you've come from. People don't give a fuck about you. If you are doing better than them, they're going to be jealous anyways and they're going to hate you anyways, period. Well, there are normal working people that also make thousands of dollars a day. Okay, Asman said this. There are, uh, uh, there are normal working people who make $1,000 a day. No, there are not normal working people who make $1,000 a day. There are only jobs that are not streamer jobs that make that money. But if you're making thousands of dollars a day, you're not working an average job. So that's what I mean. Language is so specific. So when Asman heard average job, he thought non-content creator, not non-entertainer, not famous. When everyone else heard average job, they were thinking people making 30 to 40K, 50K. So even here, look at how language is so different. So like, I don't really understand like what your point is. Yeah, I mean, 
Okay. I, I don't know what working people you know, the, the normal working people that are making thousands of dollars. You, you guys know what thousands of dollars a day is? Yeah. Let's have granted. Let's say it's 3000 No, I agree with Abin Preach here. I don't think they, I don't even think we're using the same words to have this conversation. I don't think Asmin thought he meant average worker. He thinks he thought not entertainer. I think he thought like desk job or like not famous person job. I think Asmin literally thought Hassan meant like um, like a, a suit and tie kind of job. You know what I mean? A dollar a day. Do you know how much that is over the course of all? Yeah, a thousand per day, 365 years. So top software developer. Exactly. So Asmin was thinking uh, software developer, tech guy. Right? He was thinking job outside of entertainment. And then Hassan said average. So everyone thought he meant like retail workers. A whole month? That's a lot. That's $9,000 a month. Nobody you does. think there's people out here? Nobody does that. Making anywhere from 60 to 70, making close to a million a year? Nobody does that. That's not normal people. No, they're not. CEOs and, uh, from companies sometimes don't even do that. Uh, Stop. This is the problem, okay? Yeah, see, like, I know some lawyers making 1K a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can make 1K a day easy if they're in a specific industry where that makes sense. If you're a lawyer, I mean, gosh, business lawyers... At least for my dad running his business, like 20 years ago, his lawyer was like fucking 350 an hour or something. So like he made a thousand dollars on us just visiting us for a day. Like I don't even know what he charges now or what their company charges now. But obviously certain industries can make a lot of money. But I think like everyone has a different version, like a different thing in their head. Again, it goes back to what are you imagining when someone says average worker fast? What do you imagine? Because for some people, they don't imagine fast food workers. Because an average worker wouldn't be a fast food person. They'd be more like um, a clerk at an office or maybe an accountant or maybe a fireman. But like for other people, an average worker would be somebody who works in fast food. So then, so again, when we hear average worker, I don't think we're all talking about the same thing. And this is what streamers and content creators, okay. Your job, okay. Is it difficult? Maybe, yes. Nobody cares. Shut the fuck up about it. I think this is really bad for mental health. I think it is true, but I think it's really bad for mental health. I think it's really bad because kids want to go into this industry and they don't know what they're getting into. I think it's really, really bad that we're saying to people who work odd or interesting jobs, which by the way, take a lot of effort to get there in the first place. Like nobody gives a fuck about your mental health. I think that is really fucking cringe and very, very bad for society. But you know, what the fuck? Fuck society, am I right? Right? Am I Fuck society, am I right? But like, yeah, I think it's really fucking weird to assume that the mental health of content creators doesn't matter. Uh, especially since I know for a fact, like we've talked about mental health from content creators perspectives before. But again, I understand other people don't want to hear people complain. I don't want to hear people complain either. I don't mind if you vent though. Like I don't mind if you vent. Like it's guys, it's like me crying when I had fibro diagnosis and then people saying like, well, Brittany, you get to work from home. So like you can't be sad you have fibro. It's like, bro, just let me vent. If you don't want to hear me vent, that's fine. But then, oh, I want my content creators to be authentic. I don't want them to be fake. Okay, well, I'm in pain right now and it's really difficult. I don't want to hear you. Like it's like, okay, which one do you want? This is why I say the world doesn't want authenticity. The world doesn't want to hear you. The world doesn't want authenticity. The world wants you to pretend your life is great. Now, it's true. Pop to, po positive and optimism does work better. But it's also kind of dishonest. You know what I mean? It is kind of dishonest. So, yeah, I think it's weird that, like, he said, like, nobody cares that your job is difficult. Okay, well, that's fine. But, like, some people care. Like, some people do care. I think people who don't care shouldn't listen to it. But if you care, you're probably a viewer. I just don't think anyone who cares about Hassan as a person was upset about his take. If you don't care about Hassan as a person, then sure, who the fuck cares? But if you care about Hassan as a person, I think it was a really nice thing to hear from someone, minus the fact that he thought maybe that some jobs weren't as soul-sucking. I think all jobs are soul-sucking, you know? You want to know why? Because you're well compensated, extremely well compensated for the level of difficulty of your job. This just, this just, okay. Um, what was that guy? What was his name? What was the guy who played the Black Panther? 
Who cares that he had cancer? He was a top earning Marvel superstar and he made lots of Chadwick Boseman. Who cares that Chadwick Boseman had cancer? Nobody fucking cares. Right, Chadwick? Right, guys? Who fucking cares about Chadwick Boseman having cancer? You're a movie star. You're famous. Your family has money. Nobody gives a fuck about your suffering. Who fucking cares? That's what it sounds like. What do you mean who fucking cares? I don't understand. Do we? Like, I don't understand why we're doing this. It's sad. It's sad that he had cancer and had to hide it because he would have been fired otherwise. Like, he literally hid his cancer diagnosis so he wouldn't get fired from Marvel. So he wouldn't lose his business opportunity in being an actor. And we want to, like, why are we fucking playing these mind games with each other, bro? Why are we playing these mind games? Okay? He literally did not tell people he had cancer because people, one, wouldn't have cared, but two, would have maybe fired him. So again... Hassan is just saying, yeah, I get burnt out after streaming nine hours and it sucks because people think I want to socialize, but I can't. So yeah, that kind of sucks. And it's like, why are you invalidating him? Let him be stressed and let him say that in his opinion, from his understanding of it, average jobs aren't as socially draining. Maybe he feels wrong. Maybe he's wrong on that. Do we have some sort of statistic to back it up? Or are we all just using our lived experience to say that's not my lived experience? Here, Abba is saying, if you're a streamer, nobody cares that you're in pain. And I'm saying that's kind of fucked up. Your job, okay. Is it difficult? Maybe, yes. Nobody cares. Why would you say that? Why would you fucking say that? How's that not fucked up? Shut the fuck up about it. You want to know why? Because you're well compensated. Extra if you make enough money, you can't complain. I don't want to hear you complain about your mental health, your depression, your stress, your cancer, your mom dying because you get compensated. So no burnout talks, no suffering talks, no nothing because you get compensated. So that's Abba's take. That's a really weird take, Abba. Love you. Weird take. Extremely well compensated for the level of difficulty of your job. And this is how most people internalize this and whether or not they want to hear about your suffering. How difficult is your job? How well do you get compensated for it? If your job is extremely difficult and hard to manage, but you get paid peanuts, complain as you want. I will never get. I don't agree with this. People say that about McDonald's workers. They say the pay that McDonald's workers gets is worth the amount they're getting paid. I disagree. I disagree. I think people who work McDonald's jobs are working a job that most people wouldn't want to work because it's a harder job and yet they get paid the least. And then people will say, well, if you want to get a better job than McDonald's to get paid more, you have to get this kind of job. The cushier your job is, the more you get paid in America a lot of the time. And let's say very difficult job like underwater welding. So I would say that the hardest labor jobs should actually get paid more, right? Then the cushier jobs, but at the same time, the cushier jobs seem to take more educational study, which means they help run the backbone of the world in a more like, um, sustainable moving forward way but i would say the fast food workers keep those workers going because they actually feed them and provide the fuel so i would say they should get paid more right um ken says i think abba's right about how people feel about it i do think he's right about how people feel about it i think people are being cruel about it i think this is the cruelty of the world i think the way you're thinking about it is incredibly cruel and i think if you want to give hassan compassion i don't think you deserve it either I think if you think Hassan is so well compensated, he doesn't have the right to feel burnt out, then I don't want to hear about your problems either. I don't want to hear about anybody's problems. I just don't. I don't care about anyone's problems if you do not care about other people's. I only care about people who are truly venting and not complaining. If you're complaining, I don't care. But if you're venting and you're saying, bro, I'm burnt out, bro, I feel you on that, bro. Life's hard, bro. I feel you on that, right? To me, I don't value money enough. To I know money does not bring you joy. Money pays your bills, but it does not fulfill you as a person. It is not enough. So again, for Brittany, I don't want to hear you complain at all. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you got three broken legs, 
and two dead parents and fucking all your kids died from sepsis. I don't fucking care. Because complaining is talking without solutions. If you want to vent and say, my life's fucking hard, and then you want to figure out a way to make it better, I'll fucking listen all day. But I'm not going to listen to no complainers. And I'm certainly also not going to listen to people complaining about Hassan because they don't want to be honest with themselves and say, fuck, sometimes life is hard, even when you got a million dollars in the bank. Life is hard, even when you got a million dollars in the bank, guys. Because humans have a hard life just existing. Okay? Mad at a garbage man for whining about their job. Want to know why? Because they get peanuts to go pick up your fucking trash. Okay, but they could also become streamers. Do you guys want to become streamers like Hassan did? Would you like to network and make friends and get ahead and go suck some dick and then end up becoming a streamer? Would you like to do that? Would you like to stream nine hours a day and be handsome enough to people for people to follow you? Go ahead and do it, bitch. You want to be a streamer? Go ahead and do it, bitch. You could be Asmogold who has blood on his house and lives like a hoarder and he made it as a streamer. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, Habibi. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it, bitch. I don't want to hear you complain against streamers when you don't even have the fucking balls to do it yourself. People who complain about people who do jobs they're not even willing to do themselves, I don't want to hear you. It's like people who complain about teachers. Teaching is so easy. Oh my God, an idiot could teach. Oh, teachers are ruining America. Okay, then you be a teacher, bitch. Go ahead and go to school to be a teacher, bitch. Go ahead and try, bitch. But you can't, bitch. So all you do is sit there and bitch, bitch. Like, please, bitch. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Maddox says, question, was Hassan complaining or venting? I think he was venting. Do you guys think he was venting or complaining? I thought he was venting. What do you guys think? Go ahead. Your guys' difficulty level may be at a four or five, but you get... What if he's suicidal? What if he's fighting with depression? He has he has a body, he has an eating disorder. So what if he's suffering from her, Eugenia Cooney? Is Eugenia Cooney great because she's rich? She's still sick, bro. Like you're making money sound like money solves every problem. As if, okay, sure. Compensated so goddamn well, nobody trying to hear that shit. Whenever people come to me like, man, isn't YouTube shit hard? I'm like, yeah, I guess, it, it, but. It, it, it is. Fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you for acting like it's, because it's easy for you, it's easy for everyone. Fuck you. You're just being grateful so people don't get mad at you. But bro, that's the problem. You are teaching people to be dishonest about the truth. If YouTube was so easy, everybody would do it. If YouTube was so easy, everybody would have a million subscribers. If YouTube was easy, everybody would do it. Everyone keeps saying, I would trade my, oh, I would give up my job to be Hassan's job any day. Then do it, bitch. YouTube is hard. Everything is hard. If it was easy, everybody would do it. I get paid so well, I'm going to shut the fuck up about it. That's what it is. So you're going to be fake and lie to your audience because you get paid enough. Cool. That's your decision to make. I would like honest content creators. I would like more transparency. Because I'm not going to go back to my old job. Want to know why? Because I used to get paid shit to do extremely hard work then. That's most people's reality. Most people are not being compensated half as well as the difficulty of their job. So they don't want to hear you bitch and moan about the fact that it's so socially draining. Yes, but again... Okay, get a different job. Do something different. I don't want to hear poor people complain either. I don't want to hear poor people complain. It's really annoying. Because a lot of them, friends and family included, they're not doing anything different with their lives. They even get opportunities to change their life and they don't take it. Okay? I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anybody complain, whether you're poor or not. But I don't mind hearing you vent, whether you're poor or rich. If you're genuinely stressed, bro, tell me about it. I don't care if you're rich or poor. But complaining? Nobody wants to hear it. The thing is, was Hassan complaining or venting? I think he was venting. Like they don't got to deal with the same shit for one hundredth of your paycheck. You're asking for sympathy whilst also belittling their experience. Talk about how much harder you have it. He didn't say how much harder he has it, period, though. He didn't say he has it the hardest, period. He said in his experience, in comparison, he feels like it is soul crushing to be a streamer, right? He said in his experience, this is how he feels. He could have said it better. He could have said it in a much easier way. But I, I think I understood the, the spirit in which he said it. And I, I just don't think he was saying it in a way that was totally like dismissive 
of everybody else, you know? I just don't think that, you know? Bro, you're not going to get nobody's sympathy. And if you don't understand- He had plenty of people's sympathy. He has mine. I totally relate. It's exhausting to stream nine hours a day, but hey, good on you for being a top streamer. That's pretty awesome because I know it's stressful. Understand that? That's because you're fucking out of touch. Nobody's trying to hear that shit. Right. QG says also some people spend loads of time with family and friends as a trade-off. Oh, they do. Lots of people choose to make less money to spend time with family and friends, and that's beautiful, dude. Yeah. Kay says this is like people telling athletes to shut up and play. People just want to live in their reality. They don't want to hear streamers have human experiences while having easy jobs. I agree. It's, it's the same. And if anything in life has taught me anything, everybody suffers. Even the people at the top of the game. And I want to hear their true suffering. I don't want to hear their fake complaining. I don't want to hear anyone fake complain. But if you're really suffering, bro, tell me about it. I don't care how rich or talented or beautiful you are. I will listen to pretty women tell me it sucks to be pretty and I believe them. Real women who are having, who are having real problems being like beautiful people, that's a burden that it comes with it comes with a real burden. I will listen to you vent every day. I'm not going to listen to you complain about being pretty. Do you guys know the difference? I don't want to hear a woman complain to me about being pretty. Oh my God, it is so hard having all these men hit on me all the time. Like, <laughs> so annoying. Like, they can't stop staring at my boobs. <laughs> and then they never stop covering up their boobs. They never dress different. Complaining. Then there's women who are like, I'm really happy I'm beautiful. I think I've gotten a lot of benefit from it. I'm so blessed. But honestly... Sometimes it feels so dehumanizing and I don't know how to deal with that. Sometimes I want to scar up my own face so people will stop treating me the way they've been treating me. And I will say, do not scar up your face. Stop. You do not have to do that. I know you're tempted. Don't do it. You need to understand that these people are not seeing you as a consciousness. And that is their problem. That is not your responsibility. That is a vent. That is like a feeling of like dehumanization that happens to people that is so real so again i don't want to hear you complain i want to hear you vent girl you got a problem let's solve it but if you just want to complain to me without problem solving it girl go go fucking old yeller yourself girl okay and i know asmund gold knows this because a while back he was telling game developers i don't give a f how hard your shit is nobody's trying to hear it make the fucking games Except um that's like different abba like game content creators are different than like individuals. What? Like that's totally different. It's not even the same. This tweet was well intentioned, and he went on to add a lot of important. He he made a lot of very good points. But I think it misses the perspective of the consumer. But yeah, it does. And this is the thing: is developers need to stop. Like nobody gives a. F Miss P said that's exactly how Hassan came across. He came across as a pretty girl who's complaining about being pretty. I felt like he was coming across as a girl venting about being pretty personally. So that's the other thing, right? I took it differently. I tried, I listened to it like a billion times. I watched a bunch of people react to it. I just didn't get upset. I just, nothing he said made me that upset. I thought he could have said things a little bit better. But yeah, he didn't come across as complaining at all to me. And so the question is, why did he come across complaining to other people? And then not to everybody, right? So again, like I genuinely just didn't, yeah. It's like Pokimane. I don't love Pokimane because she comes off really fake to me, but she obviously has real problems. All people do. And if she was venting about those real problems, I would be loving and compassionate. But it's difficult when Hassan and Pokimane complain because or vent because it always looks like they're complaining because they complain a lot. But sometimes they're just really venting. Now you and I could disagree. I think Hassan was really venting. But obviously, like, it's only because I probably relate to it as well. I'm like, yeah, what he said makes sense to me. But obviously, that's because, again, I chose streaming, but then other jobs would drain me as much. So I think he lost the disconnect there. I think he forgot, like, other drain. A lot of jobs are soul crushing to people. But obviously, like, streaming is very hard, right? Like, I don't think people are being honest with the conversation. All jobs suck to some degree, whether you're compensated for it or not. But obviously, people want you to be positive and optimistic so they can complain. See, they want to complain, but they don't want to hear you complain. And I think that's bad. I think people should have an appropriate space to vent. And Hassan's stream is an appropriate place to vent if he wants to. Oh, oh, it's so hard. Get the, shut the fuck up, pussy. 
Stop crying. You either do it or you don't. Holy f just uh, nobody cares about oh it's so hard oh well this is bro you're talking to people that work in construction and you're gonna say that it's hard your job could be more demanding than that i don't know but guess what to them it's not but now when it's you guys it's like oh we want and you expect sympathy for what reason guys you get paid millions of dollars Half of the time, you guys sit there on the screen shutting the fuck up while something else plays, okay? You're just reacting. It doesn't matter. It's still a job. If it was so easy, you guys go do it. If it's so easy, everybody would do it. If it's so easy, do it. Don't you guys want to make $500,000? Oh my God. Guys, you should do that. Why aren't I making $500,000, guys? Why don't I have more people watching my streams? I do it every day. Why do you think I'm not making as much money as Hassan? Right? Why do you guys think that people don't understand? Like, you could be streamers. See, I look at Hassan and I know how much, how hard it is to do it. I look at Destiny and I know how hard that is. I look at people who are really, really top streamers. I look at Pokemon and I know that's fucking hard. I can talk shit on all day about all three of these people, but I know it's hard. I know it's hard because I know, I know what it takes. And I know in comparison to what I'm doing, I'm not doing it. They are doing 200 hours a month of streaming and I am doing 80. 80. Eight zero. They are doing 200 hours of streaming a month. They are in a completely different game than me. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand why you guys think it's so easy. If it's so easy, go do it. If it's so easy, go do it. It's not easy. It's not easy to be a movie star. It's not easy to be a pro athlete. It's not easy to be a top streamer. It's not easy to be at the top. There's just no fucking way. Papa Gut, I think, called it lazy, like a lazy job. Like Hassan is lazy. Hassan cannot be lazy and stream 200 hours a month. Those two things do not go together. Are you lazy because you only work 40 hours a week at McDonald's? No, you're not lazy if you're working a full time job, guys. Aren't you sick of people calling you lazy for working a middle for working like at McDonald's full time? Aren't you fucking sick of it? Why would you do it to a streamer? Why would you call anyone who works 200 hours lazy when that's literally a number so outrageous most humans couldn't even do it why would you do that to people why would you uh, uh, working a, a middle class job ever have the audacity to complain when there are people in your own field looking at you saying you're lazy for only working 60 hours a week you're lazy for only working 45 hours a week you're lazy oh my god you're not lazy bro you're fucking hustling in your own way you're working to the best of your ability you're not lazy bro you can't work 40 hours a week and be lazy. Okay? That's not what laziness is. Lazy is not work, not streaming 200 hours a month. That's not lazy, bro. Why are people conflating these things? Or sometimes you play the f***ing video and you leave your screen for 30 minutes. You eat on the job. Like, don't pretend like this shit is crazy. Is it socially draining? Sure. I could see. Which was his point. That was literally his point is that it's socially draining. Yeah. Don't act like your job is special in comparison to others. It's not. That's crazy. That's a crazy opinion. That's a crazy opinion. It's not. Being in the military, socially training. Working sales, socially training. That's true. Even when I didn't have- That is true. It's not special more than other jobs in that regard. I agree with that, but here. To work. When I was doing remote work and it was just be myself with my coworkers, it was socially draining to have to fucking sit in Zoom calls. Yeah, but a lot of people are also neurodivergent. So I can't tell if this is my bias. How many of us are neurodivergent and any socializing is going to drain us? How many of us are neurodivergent and even one coworker is going to drain the fuck out of us? Right? That's another thing too. What about all the extroverts that are like, oh my God, you're so lazy. You, you can't even do as many sales as I can. You can't even do as many meetings as I can. It's like, bro, fucking shut up. You know, I agree with Abby here, though. I don't think streaming is uniquely socially draining. I think the stigma makes you think that streaming isn't socially draining or hard, which is, by the way, being, it's being, I've been preacher fucking doing it right now. They're making it sound like being streaming isn't that hard or isn't that socially draining. It is just as socially draining as another job that is socially draining. Right? So again, like I, I don't understand why they're doing it. They're adding to the stigma that working at McDonald's is not that hard. Because if streaming is not that hard, working at McDonald's is not that hard. But if working at McDonald's is hard, then streaming is that hard. Because hello, 
Mantis says, wait, is that a neurodivergent thing? Because a two-hour hangout with one friend is enough for me. Like, once a week, girl, you're neurodivergent as fuck, girl. There ain't no way, girl. There ain't no fucking way. There ain't no fucking way, girl. Like, again, things are hard for different people for different reasons. Okay? Like, hello? Like, okay, I worked at a grocery store. Tell me, okay, you guys got to relate to this, right? I work at a grocery store. And sometimes during lunch, yes, I would socialize, but sometimes I would go hide in my car because then they couldn't find me. Because if I re- if I had my lunch break in the room, like in the lunch room, people would want to talk to me and socialize. And I'm like, I'm on my lunch break. So I would run to my car and hide in my car and like move the chair back so no one could see me. And I would eat my food. And like I would run away from my coworkers because I just wanted peace and fucking quiet. Like I just wanted to run away. Okay. Some people are not like that. Some people on their lunch break, they even want to work through it. They're so social. They want to sing out the lunchroom. And yeah, I had those days too where I would want to be social. But dude, there were so many days when I wanted to run to my car and just like go away. I would even, when I worked really close from work, I would like run home and spend 10 minutes at home just to breathe and then drive back to work on a 30 minute lunch break. Like again, this idea that we're all the same is so different. Again, one of the reasons I've worked so hard to make streaming my full-time job and I'm willing to do it now is because it seemed like every job I worked eventually made me want to unalive myself. But then I know for a fact that a lot of my friends won't do streaming because it's too hard for them. And they've said it. They're like, this is too hard. It is too hard to figure out how to be a content creator. And that's it. At the end of the day, we all pick the easier path. It doesn't make mean it's not hard. At the end of the day, I think we all pick the easiest path for ourselves Even when that looks self-destructive, people do it because it's easiest, right? That's why introspection is so hard, right? That's why you'll see people go in chronic loops of like active toxic relationships one after another because it's easier than getting better enough to actually have a healthier relationship. At the end of the day, we all choose the easiest path, but it still is sometimes hard. Picking the easiest path doesn't make it less hard, okay? And listen to people babble about some dumb shit. Or sitting there looking at a fucking spreadsheet and then having to type shit out and my brain just wants to melt. You think after that I want to go talk to a bunch of people? Is, is the YouTube game hard? I don't know. What you do for your living? I'm a pastry chef. What time do you get up in the morning? Every morning I wake up at five in the morning. I gotta be the I gotta be the pastry, but that's worse than my boss. My boss has to be three at but be there at three to get the orders in and this and that and that and that and everything and stuff. And how much is that? Oh, that's twelve hours. My job is good. <laughs> My job is good. The fuck with me? I-, I think Hassan trying to compare his job as like harder to other people's jobs is the same as Abba as trying to compare his job as easier to other people's jobs. I just don't think that's true. Maybe I just don't get compensated enough to be where Abba's at. Maybe that's it. Maybe I don't make enough money for me to feel like I'm not allowed to vent about my job yet. You know what I'm saying? Because like you have to have multiple streams of income. You're constantly stressed. You're working 12 to 15 hour days like just to bring in an average income, right? Because like, hello, or an average-ish income depending on the state or country you're from, depending on what your normal expectation of income is, right? Maybe Abba just makes so much money he doesn't have to. But I also like to hear from rich people that struggle. I like to hear that Mark Cuban still works hard. I like to hear that people still have to work really hard um, for a certain standard of success. You know what I mean? Like, I I really like to know because it seems to be true that people still have to work hard even at a certain level of success. And from my understanding, the more successful you get, you usually have to work harder if you want to keep the momentum going. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's something to that. Yeah. And again, Hassan was saying socially draining, soul sucking and socially draining. I think a lot of jobs have that. I think streaming is one of them. I get to talk to people and I make so much money, more money than I haven't done in my life. And it's so hard because of the comments and everything and stuff. And I get to take breaks whenever the fuck. You see how it sounds? No, I don't see how it sounds. No, I don't see how it sounds. All the people that are like, yeah, Sonia, you're dumb. You're talking to people that cannot come, that they're not even understanding. And I never have. Yeah, but you're not building the bridge either. We should build the bridge between it. Like we should build, I understand what they're saying. I think they're right, but I think they're wrong for allowing it to be normalized. I think people should, like even my my in-laws came over today 
And I was like, hey, I'm really sorry that I don't have a lot of time to hang out with you guys. My career is like doing really well. Everything's going really well, but I got to keep the momentum up. If I take a break, it's it's going to fuck me over. Like I did already when I moved to Europe. I got totally fucked for like a month. I, it took me forever to rebuild my shit because it's all about momentum in this game, right? So I was like, hey, like just FYI, I even told my sister not to come visit me this summer because I can't take any days off. I'd rather her come next year when I'm more established and I can take a couple days off but still work because again, I don't have the kind of, I don't have a traditional career. Like unless you are one of the top streamers, you're not really set for life. And even if you are, you'll lose it at the momentum you're at. So yes, Hassan is set for life if he downgrades where he's at, 1000%. If he wants to keep the momentum going, he's gotta go harder. Do you guys know the difference? Like, I don't know if people know the difference. Once you get to a certain level, you're at the bottom again of that next bracket, right? So like, okay, you make 20K a year. Once you make 50, you're at a new lower of the top bracket. When you make 100K, you're at now the lower of the high bracket. So the higher of the low, but the lower of the high. And then humans tend to want to go up. They want to go up, right? So that's why Graham Stephan and other people, they settle. They pick a place to settle and they live like that's how much they make. But then people go, Graham, why don't you spend more money? You're a millionaire. And he goes, nope. He lives like he makes very little because if he lived like he made more, then he again, you'd be tempted to like up that. That's very normal. So again, I think people forget. That's why America, people making 200K are complaining about not having money. $200,000 are complaining about not having money. It doesn't matter if you're making 200K a year or a million a year or 50K a year, everyone's gonna complain. That is why I want you to accept that. Radical acceptance, no matter how rich any of you get, unless you are good with your consciousness, you will complain. And unless you are a robot, you will vent. Unless you are a psychopath, you should eventually get stressed. You will eventually get stressed, okay? I don't know why people pretend like people aren't gonna get stressed. Super weird take, guys. Had to understand what you're doing and what you're living. And I, as a matter of fact, I am glad that I, all this happened, all this in my life happened, the YouTube game and the comedy and this, this and that. Obviously, you want to be grateful. But being grateful doesn't mean you can't vent. Whatever happened now. So even though I am here where I'm at right now, doing what I do, I can still connect with you because I got the experience of having to do that and having the bullshit jobs. And I've been doing jobs sometimes that they come to me, some coworkers come to me and be like, yo, you need to slack because you're making us look bad. Listen, listen, listen. Nobody wants to hear about my problems. No. Just nobody gives a fuck. Okay? Your problems are of your own choice and literally it's because you're greedy. Because you're greedy. That's it. Just turn it off. This is so stressful, bro. Uh, no. God damn, can I try? I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. Look, 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 don't make your life harder than it needs to be. But sometimes, even when you're doing everything right, life can be hard. You know what I mean? I agree. I don't know why people keep saying this. Say this to poor people, right? Like either this applies to all people or no people. I mean, I agree to an extent. Like I'm sick of poor people complaining, just get a better job, right? I'm sick of rich people complaining, do less. Nobody wants to hear you complain. But sometimes it's okay to vent. It's okay to say, hey, I'm poor and I'm suffering. And I'm like, dude, I feel you. Or hey, I'm rich and I'm really stressed right now. Hey, I feel you. Do we understand the differences between these things? Go home, drink water, sleep, fuck, anything else. Just stop. Okay, all right. All right, that's it for today's video. By the way, we got our second channel, Abba Preaching the Fool. So anyways, maybe maybe he was complaining and I heard it wrong, but I've watched that clip a thousand times and I still don't really hear the complaining. I hear more of like a venting session. But if you guys feel like it's complaining, that's really, really valid. And I think you're allowed to feel that way. I've been
nothing but blood So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.